All right, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 classes in design, business, and more. Premium memberships give you unlimited access so you can join the classes and communities that are just right for you. Whether you wanna fuel your curiosity, creativity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep learning and thriving. Join more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare. Join groups with like-minded learners, give and receive feedback on projects, and speak with others that have the same interests as you. I personally enjoyed a lesson on Skillshare called Working Not Working, which is geared towards educating freelancers, creative freelancers in brand elevation and earning more money. Skillshare is giving away a free two month unlimited access trial to concrete subscribers who click the link in the description box below. After that, it's only $10 a month. Let's start it, you ready? Ready. Here we go. Matt Cox, number four, the fourth installment of the Matt Cox series. Uh, these tails are fucking riveting, man. Mm -hmm. These tails are just, you like my stickers? I like Take you some. Like it? I like it. Yeah. You yeah, can yeah. have, you can have that whole stack if you want. Yeah. yeah. I'll put one on. We I put them up everywhere. <laughs> I mean, if I had a Ferrari, I wouldn't put it on. Yeah. I yeah. Yeah. We'll stick one on the halfway house. Definitely keep one. <laughs> <laughs> All of your stories are just so mind blowing. It, I just finished a couple hours ago devil exposed uh, which is the story we're going to talk about today on today's podcast but the crazy thing about all your stories is that they are all they are all worthy of having screenplays they're, they're all worthy of being feature films which is insane yeah it's yeah, like it, so. you're turning over these stone i mean they're, they're not stories that are that are making headlines no one's looking for this kind of stuff you were just there and and the fact that by chance you met Rossini, the guy, the main guy who tells the story. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, I was actually. It's doing pretty it. incredible. So how, how, how did the guy Rossini, how did you meet this guy and how did he introduce this whole story to you? Um, he does legal work and he okay. works with uh, Frank Amadeo. Oh, really? Yeah. He, he, you know, bounces that like they bounce ideas off of each other. Really, Rossini would say I bounce ideas off of Frank because, you know, he's like, because he, he's so smart. You know, yeah. He's, and Rossini's, uh, he doesn't really talk to almost anybody. I don't think he talked to anybody from, for months except for Frank. Uh, he's got a touch, and even he'll admit this, he's got, he goes, I, I have a little bit of an Asperger's syndrome. Okay. You know, just a touch, you know, it's, it's, he's uh, socially a little aw okay. uh, awkward. Matter of fact, you know what I ought to do? I have a clip of him at a wedding. It's like a, where he gives a toast. Oh, really? Yeah. I think he's probably pretty shit-faced, <laughs> but... He does give a toast, but you can actually see like a 25 year old, you know, uh, Rossini. Yeah. Rossini. Okay. Or, uh, um, Where can you see that clip? You, you have it like saved somewhere? Um, yeah, I have it. Uh, I have it on my computer. I can okay. send it to you. Yeah, send it. Shoot. Uh, and my assistant can send it to you. Before Shoot. we get too far into uh, how you met him, can you give me the basic log line of the story Devil Exposed that Rossini told you? Or that the story about Rossini, which is called Devil Exposed, Devil Exposed, which is the book that you wrote. Right. 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 So what is the basic synopsis or log line of that story? Uh, it's, you know, he's an, uh, Rossini is an admitted um, drug dealer, or he really is a manufacturer of drug or drug trafficker. Uh, so he manufactures drugs. Super smart guy. Anyway, so he's a, let's say he's a drug trafficker, and he gets roped into... A conspiracy that he was not involved in he gets set up by essentially the the FBI and an FBI informant uh, and he ends up he basically gets railroaded he, he ends up in federal prison and the person that he got framed for yeah, a murder right right Right. Yeah. He got framed for a murder that he didn't commit in order to save the ass and to save the asses of the agents. a couple FBI agents that were dirty. Right. Okay. And and uh, Mueller was the U.S. attorney at, the, at that time in the in, in San Francisco, and he, you know, like I, like I said, he didn't start the conspiracy. He came in part way, and discovered it was a conspiracy. But instead of untangling it and saying, you know, unraveling the whole thing and saying, whoa, whoa, this isn't right. We got to go after these guys and these guys. Instead, he just furthered the conspiracy and basically let these guys go into, you know, let these guys uh, rot in prison. Mueller did that. Yeah. Now keep right. in mind, 
two of the guys definitely murdered. Rob, and we're talking about like the Robert Mueller, the guy that's all over CNN, the Mueller report. Yeah, yeah, guy. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The guy, uh, um, special counsel investigating um, right. uh, Trump. Uh, but you know, and this is the thing I think I mentioned to you before. It's like, you know, this is what's so fucked up. Is like it would be an amazing story. It'd be a better story if Mueller had nothing to do with it. Because what happens is Mueller ends up overshadowing everything becomes Mueller, Mueller, Mueller. Well, it's, if his name was John Doe, it would, you'd be like, oh, man, this guy got framed. Instead, everybody that reads it focuses in on Mueller, mm, and that, yeah. that's really bullshit. He's kind of like a selling piece to the story. Right, right. Well, and, and what happens is it become, people become polarized when, when uh, politics are involved. But to me, it's not about politics. I don't have a problem with Mueller. I don't care that it's Mueller. Right. I could give a shit. What I care about is that a U.S. attorney helped – further a conspiracy, did not cut this guy loose, and has continued to uh, conspire to keep this guy, keep Rossini in prison. And, you know, this guy, listen, the two guys that, that committed the murders, bro, they, they had Thanksgiving with their family. Yeah. <laughs> Pete's eating a holiday meal right. in the fucking chow hall, bro. He didn't kill it. He got 40 years. Pete meaning Rossini. Rossini, sorry. Right, Pete, yeah. uh, Rossini, yes. Pete, a.k.a. He refers to him as Pete, but we're talking about Rossini in the story. Right, right. I'll try and stick with Rossini. Okay. You correct me. I just, want, I just want to try to keep it uh, very yeah, consistent. Uh, it's, right. it's very, the story is like convoluted with names and it's hard to follow right. with, with all the names. Well, and that's why I'm thinking we just, here's, here's what I'm thinking. Because, you know, there's some stuff, and, and I don't know if you, you noticed this. And but, you made it clear about why it's so con confusing because because Rossini... The, yeah. the way he told you it, he wanted to focus, he wanted to put a lot of focus on all the little details because they meant so much to him. Right, because he's been locked up over 20 right. years. And it's his life. It's his whole life. So yeah. if you're fighting your case for 20 years, every single thing is, is massive in your mind. And you have to think your world in prison is very small. So to me, you hear something, you're like, hey, I'm, I'm not going to mention that, it's no big deal. He's like, no, no, it's so super important because so-and-so did such and such, and that's why it's so-and-so. And then they, when I got arrested, they said that I did this, and I didn't. That wasn't even my fault. That wasn't even my stuff. Right. So you're like, Jesus, God almighty. Bro. <laughs> right. right. And there's a lot of little details There's like all these that. little details that what happens is he doesn't realize, because I told you he has, a, he, has a, he has a touch of Asperger syndrome. Super smart. Like, makes me feel like I'm drooling. I mean, <laughs> he, he really, he's just brilliant. Uh, you can say, I, I can ask anything you know and say yeah i wonder what you know you don't have the internet i don't pick I, I can't pick up and say hey siri when did this right. happen i'll say something and he'll say no, you like siri just <laughs> activated siri that. oh my god <laughs> that's funny okay the feds are the feds are listening yeah, in right they're now listening, they're listening live <laughs> so uh but he immediately know, he'll know it and he'll go he'll he'll say the date Oh yeah, that happened. In, uh, it was a uh, that was nineteen eighty two. Oh uh, shit! Uh, uh, that was October nineteenth. I'm not sure if it was the fourteenth or fifteenth. And you're like, the fuck do you know that? And he goes, well, because it was it was so and so's birthday, and 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 on, on on her birthday we went to go see this this uh you know this whatever concert. Yeah. And I remember it was two days later, and that happened. So it had to be the fifteenth. Yeah, no, you know it was definitely the fifteenth. You're like, what the fuck? He's it's got like fucking Rain Man <laughs> timeline. And, and it's and it's bizarre. <laughs> it really is bizarre. And I could what was but what was great about it was I could turn around I'd go, hey Pete, when did this happen? Oh, well, that was that was uh, that was October thirteenth. Uh, I remember because and he and he'll tell you why he remembers, you know. And and as he gets to to know you, he's he loosens up a little bit. You know, funny guy. Mm -hmm. We would laugh all the time. <laughs> Works for Frank Amadeo. Uh, they both do legal work, and mm -hmm. of course, you know he's done a, a a good portion of his own legal work. Yeah. I mean, listen, this guy's been sentenced. What three, four times? Was it four times? He's been sentenced. No, well, he was. I thought it was 40? two twenty-year sentences. No, no, he. That, that, but that was at the same time. I'm saying he then appealed it. Oh yeah. Got a portion knocked off, then appealed it. Got a portion knocked off, then appealed it. Got a portion knocked off. So he's been sentenced. Let's see, one, wait, one, two, three, four. He's been four sentenced times, right? four times. Yeah. Who the fuck gets a, who wins three appeals? If <laughs> That's you don't, crazy. You got to yeah. have something wrong with your case to win. Yeah, to win. You that can't is crazy. win one appeal. <laughs> yeah. You know how many 2255s are, are that's a, a, a habeas action where you say that your lawyer is ineffective? Man, there's something like 3,500 that of them that are filed for every one that is actually uh, approved. You, I'm sure the appeal ratio is way lower. Right. Wow. So he, I mean, he's, there's, listen, when you see this, you, oh, you know what's so, so funny? Remember, I, I, so you just got done reading it. Remember when the guy, after Mueller gives him that, Gives Pete the ironclad agreement that he's gonna his sentence will be reduced. Yeah, 
And then the new U.S. attorney says, Your, Your Honor, there's no agreement. We've never, uh, we have never promised this man anything. So Rossini is like, what the hell? And he I send, have a copy of it right here. <laughs> yeah, I have a copy right here. And he sends it in. So Do the you judge, have a copy of it? I, so I got a copy no. of it. No. I, I printed out because it's <laughs> 740 pages, right? I printed. Man, Do you I mean, have the agreement that him and Robert Mueller Scott signed? Mueller. Yeah, it's got, I mean, it's, I, I got to get. Right, I right, right. We'll get to it. that. We'll get, we'll get to, to that. It. Yeah. Oh, wait, That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> Where oh, do you print all this stuff? That's it right there. <laughs> I wrote down uh, right here. See, I, I tagged some of the important ones because you cut me an hour short. So I got all, yeah. I'm all <laughs> frazzled and shit. So I was going to have everything tagged. I was all excited. <laughs> Fuck me up. So yeah, uh, promise. Uh, this is a, a promise in this uh, letter confirming agreement between you and the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Northern District. Uh, of California, and this is this is the actual promise where they actually say and it's these two paragraphs right wow. here where they say right after you cooperate, we will cut your or we will reduce your sentence. They never say that. Never. I've never. This is the only one I've ever seen. And if you told me about it, if I hadn't seen it, I wouldn't even believe it. Wow. Because I'd be like, they don't do it. Yeah. Period. They just don't do it. No, it just doesn't happen. And so so one. let's start back okay. uh, from the beginning. So you meet Rossini in prison, right? How does, do you approach him? Does he approach you? How does this whole well, Frank thing get kicked off? My, Frank okay. was working on right. my case. Okay. And I kept sitting at the table. I was working on another guy's story named um, uh, Donovan Davis. Mm -hmm. And uh, Donovan has a really good story, too. It's about a con man. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's so funny about his story is that <laughs> the whole story is not Donovan's the mark. He just happened to end up in prison. The con man is this guy, uh, uh, Blaine. And so I love Blaine. Yeah. I'm like, Blaine's, a, he did what? Oh, that's great. And he's just like, you know, I hate this fucker, right? You know, it ruined my life. I'm like, yeah, but he's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. Did you read this one? And he's like, and, <laughs> and I would, you. and he was always guy. like, you know, you fucking remind me of him, right? And I go, <laughs> yeah. I know, I'm sorry about that, Donovan. So what happened with, you know, yeah. and he just, anyway, uh, but Pete and Frank are working on Donovan's stuff. Okay. And I kept coming around and eventually Pete started talking to me and then, you know, we would talk a little here and a little there. And then one day Donovan said, you know, have you talked to Pete about his case? And I went, you mean Frank? No, no, Donovan. Oh, Donovan. Okay. Cause I was all You're working on Donovan's story. story. You were working on Donovan's story. I was working on okay. Donovan's okay. story. Frank and Pete <clears throat> were doing, working on his legal case. Okay. And so Donovan one day said, you ought to talk to Pete about his story. Mm. Cause I was wrapping up Donovan's story and I was finishing it up and it, it's on the website. It's, it's called the gap. The gap. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, you know, I said, oh, yeah. And he goes, yeah, you got to talk to him. So I mentioned it. And hey, Pete, you know, Donovan said, you have a really interesting story. And he said, Donovan was the one who kept saying, yeah, yeah, the uh, um, his U.S. attorney ended up being FBI director. He's like one of the longest running FBI directors. I was like, oh, OK. And he was like Robert Mueller. Oh, OK. Yeah. Mueller to me was nobody. He's nobody. Then. What year was this? Yeah. About two, three years ago. OK. Yeah. I mean, I would know the. What does it say? 17, 2017, maybe. Um. Uh, hold on. Boom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. October seventeenth, mm. two thousand. October two thousand seventeen. Okay. So, uh, so we started talking. We walked around the compound a few times. He told me some stuff. It did sound. It, you know what it sounded very Breaking Bad. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's, just, it's straight Breaking Bad. Yeah. Only these guys are cooking crystal meth in Hollywood. And we're in Hollywood, in Beverly's, Beverly Hills, and penthouse suites and shit. Yeah. Not I mean, only that, but they hired a chemistry professor. To cook all the crystal meth. Right. Yeah, th that's like the guy the that teaches Rossini how to do it. Right. <clears throat> they, they go to like, is it, it's not UCLA. It's it, Well, no, they do go to UCLA. Yeah. They go to, but that's not where he's from though. That He wasn't the professor there, but that's where mm -hmm. they go to use the chemistry. You know, there's no internet. So they're going yeah. there and studying and they're refining, you know, and they would break it down so that they didn't get any, any, um, any of the uh, controlled substance, uh, controlled uh, uh, whatever products or that they're, so then they're breaking it down to the essentials and uh. building everything up and coming up. I mean, it's amazing. Yeah. What he was doing is amazing. I mean, listen, I'll bet you Pete's got 160 IQ at least. Yeah. I mean, just the guy's just brilliant. Couldn't tell you how much car cost. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's, he's like, he's rain man. You know yeah. what I'm saying? He's, yeah. He, he's just, but he's, he's brilliant. So, um, what happens is we start talking, we start walking around the compound and so I finished up Donovan's story and then I was doing somebody else's story and I basically heard, he told me his whole story. I was like, man, that's really good. You know, he kept focusing on his case. I was like, yeah, okay, but you know, basically I understand the dirty agents. The, and when he started talking about dirty FBI agents, dirty, and I was like, you know, it's like, okay, bro, let's be reasonable here. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Can you prove that? He's like, yeah, I can prove it. I got like, he had like, tw he has like 24, 25 bankers boxes filled with uh, stuff. <laughs> 
He, they've got a whole room with it stacked in there. Listen, the, the, the staff hate his guts. Yeah. I mean, they're like, you got a whole fucking room with all your boxes. But he's got a court order. Says you can't throw it away. Right. So he, uh, uh, anyway, so he's like, yeah, I can prove it. And he's like, I can prove it. He said, look, they, w- the agents retired. The, you know, this happened. I, they, they admit this. They admit that. So anyway, I'm like, okay. So I was skeptical. But then as you get to know him, you realize that, you know, he doesn't, he's not, he's not a liar. Yeah. He's not an exaggerator. He's not, he's not that guy. It's all about facts for him. He can't massage things. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, yeah, it'd be, yeah, but if you said, you ought to just say it like this from now on. And he's like, yeah, but, but that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be accurate because technically it, and you're like, ah, oh, Christ. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> All right, Pete, you can say it like that. You know, if I, <laughs> if I say it's this, he's like, well, the, the, the actual legal term is, what the fuck what the legal term is? I'm trying to, I'm writing a story here. Yeah. Nobody knows the difference between that and that, you know? Right. So, uh, this whole thing started basically when he was like in his early twenties, and they were they were, they started manufacturing ecstasy, right? Right. Started with ecstasy. Yeah. And it wasn't even illegal yet. Okay. So then it becomes illegal, and he and uh, he and this guy named John Ellenberger, mm-hmm. Ellenberger brings him in mm-hmm. because he's a super smart kid, and Ellenberger is a few years older than him, and he asks around, and he knows him through some other guys, and he comes to him and he approaches him a few times. And Ellenberger's at this point, like mid twenties, driving a Ferrari, oh, and he's running around LA just yeah. slinging coke and, and ecstasy and banging models. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean literally banging Playboy models. I mean, he's you know he's a rock star. He's and he's partying with guys from Axel. Ru- I mean, from uh, uh, Guns and Roses. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, in the other, in the larger volume book, I, and I talk about how Pete would come home and these guys from fucking Guns N' Roses would be on the couch with his little brother playing the guitar. <laughs> that's and crazy. He's like, he's like, you know, it wasn't a big deal. Looking back, I realized, yeah, that's not normal. <laughs> yeah. Like not, you know, he's also there living in a two and a half million dollar house. He's like with no furniture. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, he's like, I mean, it's, you know, you're kids. He goes, you're just right. stupid. Right. So, but yeah, they would move. And, and so they set up a, they end up, they end up, they're making a, a ton of money. Pete starts making a ton of money. And then what they do is this guy Robolus comes along and, and he comes to them and they know he know, they know the circle of drug dealers. They know these guys are manufacturing X. Mm-hmm. So Robolus comes in and says, look, can you manufacture this? And it's just crystal. And he goes, what is it? He goes, it's called ice. It's crystal meth. He goes, it's methamphetamine, but it's crystallized. He goes, and it's a, a super pure form of it. Right. <clears throat> and he goes, well, yeah, give it to me and I'll, I'll put it in the mass spectrometer and fucking right. break it down figure out what's in this shit keep in mind it's pre-internet yeah so they break it down he talks to the uh <clears throat> he talks to the professor and they go and they they break it down the professor says okay well we got to do this and this so they they break it all down I and mean, it's it's breaking bad yeah they it is figure the they figure the shit out and they don't but they're not making meth they're making crystal meth which i didn't know the difference i wonder if breaking bad was based off this fucking story i don't you know when did like, breaking bad first come out uh, there's a guy it's based off of is that yeah. yeah i mean this it, seems yeah. too yeah i've seen the story on the there's a there's a guy that looks just like that guy in, oh, yeah. in breaking bad yeah it's based yeah and breaking him. bad was way after this too you know this is breaking yeah. bad was it? like 10 years 10 15 years after that right uh so actually, the professor does get busted eventually. Right, like I've seen, I've re- read uh, two articles on him getting busted. And Not how did they? Pete. How did they uh, get this prof- this this chemistry professor was, to, to manufacture the really, crystal meth? Well, he needed money. Money, right. it's always money. Yeah, yeah. He, it needed, I mean, listen, I got. He, he didn't have cancer, did he? No, it's not. <laughs> it, <laughs> it's not in this book. Yeah, but in the in the the full book, is I mean, the professor is hilarious. I mean, like he's dating this he's dating this uh, tall black chick that Pete's like that. I'm. It may have been a man. Oh, he goes, I mean, Adam Zappel. He was like, we had some serious discussions. He was 25 years younger than him. He goes, he's just head over heels. He said, I mean, it, it was it was bizarre. Yeah, wow. it was bizarre. So you know, and and he and he of course he's smoking. Uh, did I mention that he's smoking? Oh, he's free basing. Free basing. Smoking coke. Right. Right. Oh, God. Uh, which you know back then was not like you know it wasn't crack. It was right. it was free basing. Close to the same fucking different. thing. I understand, but in his mind it was different. <laughs> right. Right. Minus a little. Oh yeah. Yeah. Soda. It wasn't when you're know. doing it. Of course it's different. Yeah. It right. Scummy. I'm not smoking crack. Right. They're free basing. So he. Uh, There's a difference. God damn it. So they're doing the drugs and everything. I mean, he and uh, he and Ellenberger end up. They get into a, a huge fight. They, they separate, and then so Pete takes over. Well, when they, Pete takes over, they end up making uh, start making. So Pete starts cooking it. Yeah, cook. He's been doing it. He's, oh, I mean, he. So Pete learned from the chemist. He learned absolutely. He was, he was okay. his right hand man. Okay, cool. You know, he's talking about the part where you know, he's driving him around because he kept uh, the professor keeps crashing cars and shit. So he's kind of like the handler, right? He's babysitting him, but. He's also has learned everything. So, and Pete's super smart. So he picks up right away. So mm. I've been, listen, I've been in Coleman before where actual chemists 
come and sit down and Pete starts talking to him and he's like well, what's the chemical combination and they start talking and the guy will walk away and he'll have a chemistry degree and he's like has he got a he's where do you graduate and I'm like Fucking graduate? What are you talking about? Dropped out of high school. He's got a high school diploma. Yeah. What do you mean? They're like, what? I'm like, yeah. And, and, and he's like, fucking, he knows this and this and this. And I'm like, dude, he's a sharp dude. Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> if only it used his superpowers for good. Right. Jesus. Um, yeah. So, so what happens is they start making ice and they start making a ton of money with ice. And, uh, so at some point, this guy, there's a, a task force set up throughout California. There's many task forces. and Most of them are the FBI is involved in or over in some way. And they'll, they will conscript people from the other, the state agencies. And what they do is they, they deputize, deputize them as basically FBI agents. You know, they call, they'll call him a, he's an FBI, uh, he's a deputized federal officer working for the FBI task force. Well, so he's in, he, so all of the, so he's now enforcing all of the federal laws. He's an FBI agent is what he is. Right. And, and that comes up a few times, but so whenever you hear me say FBI, FBI, FBI keeps being brought up. The government keeps trying to separate them. No, no, that was like Mueller's like, he was a state. He was a state. No, he wasn't state. He's in, and, and I'll specifically, th this is the document that I was talking about where I explain that this is where uh, the guy, Sean Barrera. Who, now, who was Sean Barrera? Sean Barrera is the, I mean, he says right here, deputized special federal officer for the FBI. Okay. That, Sean Barrera. He works for the FBI task force, okay. the drug task force. And it's right here, and it's, anyway, it, this is on the website. It's like Exhibit 8. Okay. So, Exhibit 8. So, I, and I don't go through all these. There's 740 pages of exhibits. I've knocked it down to maybe this is maybe, maybe 200 pages. <laughs> okay. Uh, and, and I feel like I, I trimmed it down pretty good. I'm yeah. Sure. I, there's some stuff I would love to, to go over, but the fact of the matter is, you know, n nobody's going to fucking watch a, a, a six hour podcast. R yeah. Well, they might actually. Yeah, if, somebody, you're, if you're doing it, they'll watch it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny. Okay. So, uh, anyway, so. Like, uh, this is going to be a little I uh, issue because on the only reason I, I'm not even really. Don't want to focus on the book because someone watching. Oh man, I'm sorry. Sorry. Some, I'm, see, I'm a hands guy. I'm, yeah. I'm talking. <laughs> my, so, uh, you know, the problem is what we're talking about. People will watch and say, "Oh, that's bullshit. That's not true." Okay, well, right. don't fucking try. Don't listen to me, bro. I, go on the buy the book. Definitely buy the book. Um, buy the book. Go on the website. I got a whole website with 740 pages of documents and. They, it, they're, this thing is, man, this thing, is, there's never been anything this supported with documentation. Right. So I'm saying, I'm just going to go, let's just go kind of go through the documents. We don't have to read them anything because I know we had taught that talk. It's boring. I'll just explain what each document is and we'll just kind of go through and that will tell the story. Right. Mm -hmm. So let's tell the story through the documents so instead of the book. Right. You know, I okay. mean, there is a book. There is a book. So Devil Exposed. You can buy it on Amazon. You can buy it on the Amazon. Book. The link is below. Link's below. So. Here is, okay, so Barrero is an FBI agent. He, he, his main asset is a guy named Mark Farcione. Right. Farcione is, he rides with the Hells Angels. Mm -hmm. He's a, he was once a drug dealer. Now he's just a professional, he's a professional informant. Um, informant. So he gets, he weasels his way into groups. He gets them comfortable with them. He starts dealing drugs with them and they come in and crack them, right? Yeah. <clears throat> this is common. The problem is there's a lot of money involved. And so what happens is these guys start ripping up periodically. They're in a situation where I've kind of infiltrated your group. You trust me. We set up a deal. You bring half a million dollars. I'm supposed to bring the drugs. I don't bring the drugs. I just bring my, my badge and my gun. Yeah. And I say, give me the shit, FBI, or we can just bust you. Right. You've got right. a life sentence on you right now. You're going to get a life sentence or just give me hand over the drugs or the money or whatever it is. Just stick some up for it. Now, yeah, what could are, this guy do with the, What could this right. guy possibly do with, with, for example, 10 pounds of ice? 
oh, well, he he just could take that and then parlay it into another drug deal. Where now he just sells the ice. Now he can just sell it. Okay, got it. Right, right. So if he if they end up getting the money, great. If they get ice, well, that's fine. Then they can, they can then turn around and sell the ice. Right. They're not worried about getting busted. Yeah. Right. No matter what happens, they always with, got a, like a get out of jail free card, right? Well, well, think about it. Even if I walked in, I arranged something to go to sell it, and then boom, there's a raid. Right. I can always turn around and if it's the DEA, you go, whoa, right. whoa, whoa, what are you guys doing? Hey, right. I'm FBI. Right, under undercover. Right. Yeah. So, and keep, keep in mind, oh, keep in mind. <laughs> I said that about a thousand times last night. That's okay. I'm going to go with understand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you have to understand. Okay, so. Take a shot every time he says keep in mind. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you, so you have to understand, Farcione actually gave I'm sorry, Barrero gave Farcione a badge and a gun. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm, you don't give your informant a badge and a gun. Right. Yeah, he's right. got a badge and a gun. He's flashing it. He's telling people he's yeah. FBI. He's, and what's even funnier, what's not even in the book, is that at one point, Farcione loses the FBI, uh, loses the badge. <laughs> Pete's mom has it. Has it in her safety deposit box. Has took pictures of it, sent it to Mueller saying, come get this badge. I don't want it. Pete told him about it during the interviews. Mueller didn't even, he didn't even respond. He can't respond because a 302 would be generated. Uh, What's a 302? It's a, it's a, a report from the FBI that's a chronological report so that any agent can grab it and re- start reading. And it tells everything that's step by step, everything that's happened, everybody we've talked to, everything we've done, every phone call we got, every interview, yeah. everything. So just documents. Right. Everything is recorded. It. Right. He doesn't right. even. Right. Keep in mind, if I that. called up and said, hey, I, I found an FBI badge sitting outside, within 30 minutes, there'd be two agents. Here oh, picking yeah. It up. Real quick. But he can't say anything because of you have to hear the whole, you know, the whole story. Yeah. He can't. He can't fur- know about it. Right. Right. He can't further this, this whole FBI thing because he's been denying it the whole time. Right. So. All right. So eventually what happens is. This is already taking too fucking long. <laughs> All right. So eventually what happens is Farcione and Barrero get John Ellenberger to they 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 go to them and they say, Look, we need to buy a bunch of like ice or I think coke. it was ice. Was it, was it ice? Yeah. They wanted to buy a bunch of ice. Like I, I fifty pounds exactly. or something. Oh right, right. Of was it ice or, or coke? I thought it was ice. Fuck, I don't remember. Who, who, who cares? Ice, ago. Coke, what's the difference? It might, right, see, Rossini, 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 Rossini uh, would know. Oh, difference. yeah, Rossini yeah. would know. That. Oh, actually, so, there's a difference. <laughs> so, Quite a big difference. Right, so what, what happens is a drug deal. They set up a drug deal where they, they're supposed to show up, and they're bringing product and money, and mm. what happens is they show up, and they pull out their badges. This is at their drug lab, in the penthouse right. on Sunset, Sunset, Sunset Boulevard. Boulevard, yeah. In this high rise building where they've got a drug lab. They go they they go in, they get the money, they take the money, they're supposed to bring the drugs back. Uh instead, they pull their badges out and they say, Hey, listen, man, we're taking your shit and we're taking all this ice. Mm-hmm. They take everything and they go, Just be thankful you're not going to prison right now. Don't say a fucking thing and they walk off. So Pete's there. I think there's another guy there too, and so is John uh um Ellenberger. Ellenberger, yeah. So Ellenberger's like, holy shit. Keep in mind, Ellenberger's been going around town vouching for this guy. He's been telling people, oh, he's good. Oh, he's good people. He's good for people. For Fushion, Fushion? For Farcion. Farcion, yeah. Farcion yeah. Barrera. They're good, they're good guys. Oh, bad, you know. Not good guys. Not, no, no. <laughs> well, and, and not a good idea to be telling your drug dealing buddies who right. are serious but drug dealers. they can dealers, trust him. Right. But you can trust this guy. And and they, they've been dealing with him. So yeah. it, fuck. Doesn't look good. Point is, is that they take the fucking money. And they leave. So here's so what happens is that happens. He's pissed off about it. Everybody's upset with him. He's lost a chunk of money. Chunk of money. How much money do you think that that bust was worth? Um, oh, I mean, that was in the millions. It was in the millions. I okay. mean, it was like I think he got away with cash of like this, something like three hundred thousand. I'd have to look look okay. at the exact. But amount. The, the all the all the uh, the but ice was the worth ice was worth over two to three million oh, yeah, or something. Several million. Okay. Yes, at least several million. Okay. So. What, what ends up happening is two weeks later, two, three weeks later, two or three weeks later, they're, they're doing another, uh, uh, they're cooking more ice. So they're cooking ice, 
and everybody leaves for the day and Rossini's there and he's burning off some chemicals. Like he's like, you know, you can burn off like the water. If you burn it off, you'll still have some there and you can use that. He goes, I'm burning it off. He ends up a, a lick of flame shoots up and hits the uh, fire extinguisher oh, or shit. fire, whatever. And it goes off. Woo, woo! I mean, yeah. fucking goes nuts. He's in a lab yeah. with, with tons of money and, and everything. These guys are driving Porsches and Ferraris. I mean, and they're, they're, they're in their early 20s. So he grabs the money. He grabs some ice. He grabs his stuff. He goes running downstairs. He jumps in his Porsche. He takes off. The uh, fire department shows up. They go in. There's a fucking meth lab. Uh-huh. So they call the, the police. The police show up. They check it out. They go, oh, my God, this is insane. Well, there's a laptop there that's... It, that's Pete's. There's mail from Ellenberger. Ellenberger's like driver's license. Somebody's driver's license is there. The, the electric and water's in different people's names. We're all going to prison. Yeah. You're all done. You got some explaining to do. I mean, it, it, he's like, you don't understand. The, the amount of evidence that was in there is just devastating. So they all get together, and they're terrified. Like, the next day, they're all, like, freaking out. Pete's already gone and given his lawyer $600,000 in cash because he's like, you got to bail me out. And the lawyer's like, I can't bail you out with 600000 That's crazy. He's like, well, take the cash. I don't know what to do. I'm going to get arrested. So they go to the mall. They're talking, and they're all flip, flipping out. And basically, because it's Pete's fault. I'm sorry. God damn it. Because it's Rossini's fault. Yeah. So because it's Rossini's fault, they say... Pete is Rossini. Pete is Rossini. Yeah. Call Farcione. We know he's dirty. Yeah. He's a dirty FBI agent. He's, I mean, I know he's actually a dirty, um, uh, he's actually a, an, informant. an informant, but he's playing FBI. They think he's an FBI agent. So they're like, call him. Yeah. Call him and Barrero. So the guy like, that took the, the load from Took all before. the money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We know he's dirty. Yeah. So I can call and talk to him. Right. He kind of owes you one. So they, he calls him up. Guy, you know, they go pay phone. Makes a phone call, gets the fucking call back. It's a pager, you know. Talks to him and he says, "Hey, we." And so he immediately goes, "What the fuck are you guys doing? We gave you a pass. Yeah. We let you go. You, why'd you stay in the fucking place? You know, it's going because keep in mind too, they had told the FBI they was they were going to bust these guys. Instead, they ripped them off. And they right. told them when we got there, there was no lab. They oh, moved. Shit. Now there's a lab two weeks later. Right. So They're now like, he's we've in been, some shit. We've been in the office all day saying, I shit you not. They I, they must have left. They must have come back. We didn't know. So yeah. instead of busting them, they just got the money from them. Yeah, right. they took the money. And said there was nothing right. there. Right. Jesus. So, but they didn't. Right. So Pete's like, so th they end up talking and he says, uh, they said, man, you guys are in a lot of trouble. And and Pete said, he, I could I could hear he was, he was, he was really anxious. He was, he was scared. Yeah, I'm sorry. Re Rossini was like, he was scared. Yeah. So I saw an opportunity. He goes, and he goes, man, you guys are in a lot of trouble. He goes, yeah, well, that pales in the comparison to how much trouble you two fuckers are in. Yeah. If anything happens to me or anybody that I know, he's if we so much as get talked to about this shit, he goes, you guys are going down. He, he just ripped them off. Right. So he's like, all right, I'll take care of it. <laughs> he said, call me in a couple of days. So he calls him back a couple of days later. Nobody's ever spoken to him. They don't ever call. They don't ever talk. And just to let you know, this is the this is the actual lease from a guy by the name of uh, Joey Escoboza. Joey Escoboza, his phone number's on here, his address, his everything's on his on the lease for that apartment for? for the apartment in, yeah. the, in the hills. Exhibit twelve in the hills. Yeah, I mean uh, in the the condo. The, this is the, the lab, the yeah, meth the lab. lab, the meth lab. Right, right. Never even got talked to. Not what matter of fact. The guy in the lease and no one ever even talked. Nobody to him. even talked to him. They quashed the whole thing. They went wow. in, boom, boom, boom. So he did. FBI, he squashed it all. You guys go away. Drop the whole fucking case. It's over. Jeez, so damn. he's like, so Pete's like, fuck. I mean, we're, we should have all been going to jail, yeah, to prison. So, um, this is this one right here. This is a. This happens later. This is a transcript from Mark Farcione, where Farcione, actually in the transcript. Exhibit, this exhibit 10. In the transcript, he says, he actually talks about uh, how he's a, you know, playing a big Coke dealer, how they had like a lab set up over there, over there in Beverly Hills, Sunset Boulevard, Sunset Boulevard, Sunset Boulevard. Mm -hmm. he says it three times. I'm just probably coked up. Uh, <laughs> uh, he goes, uh, he, and he says that, he says basically that he, he switches a little bit. He says that, Ellenberger came to me because keep in mind the 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 uh, 
deputies and every and the agents and everybody later they are hearing what's going on so when they come to talk to him he admits yeah yeah something happened like that but that's not what happened and he basically says look Ellenberger asked me to sell him some kilos of coke he gave me a hundred thousand dollars and I ripped him off for the hundred thousand I mean he tells him I ripped him off for the hundred thousand dollars where's the one where he says why would he admit it because he's being, they're, they're saying he was ripped off. He ripped off 300000 and a whole bunch of ice. Okay. He's saying, no, 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 that wasn't it. That wasn't it at all. He also talks about Aria. We talk about Aria mm. in a second. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to think of where he says, uh, shit, it's actually pretty good the way he says it too. Damn. Oh, here it is. He says, uh, uh, that's, that's I, I just told you. I, I told him... It's better than getting busted, you know, uh, the, the lost money. It's basically, uh, I, you know, I, fuck, I took the money. I shouldn't have taken it, but I did. Fuck. <laughs> Those are his words. <laughs> this yeah. is him saying, <laughs> he tells him, because you, you have to read the whole thing. Like, they're, they're like, they're badgering him. Right. Mm. Oh, you did this? You did, did you have an, a, a badge? I didn't have a badge. You didn't have a badge? You didn't tell people this? He's like, no, no. What about the money? Well, we know you took the money. We didn't. And he's finally, he's like, ah, ah, Fucker. He just fucking yeah. starts. Okay, I took the fucking money and he admits it. I shouldn't have, but I did. Right. But he downplays it to a hundred grand. He downplays it to a hundred grand, and they even ask him, "Did Barrero know?" And he goes, "Yeah, I kind of." They go, "So he knew?" And he's like, "Yeah, how'd you tell him that?" And he's like, "Well, you know, I kind of eased it in." Like, no. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> gotta read the transcripts. The guy's such a fucking clown. <laughs> I mean, he comes off like. Anyway, so That's this. Crazy. I'm trying to think. This is, I mean, this basically, so that's that's him admitting. He also talks about, well, there's other stuff he talks about. I don't know if I should put that aside. Fuck it. Anyway, I'm not worried about it. Um, it's on the, it's on the website. You got to read that. It's just funny. Yeah. Um, so okay. all these PDFs are on the website? Yeah. Okay. Everything's on the website. Uh, not my website. On a, The website is uh, uh, devilexposedexhibits.com. Exhibits. Okay. Can you put a link? I can put a link to okay, that as well, cool. yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is he to, in here. He talks about how everybody thought he was law enforcement, but he never told them he was law enforcement. Of course, I've also got about six other statements where he showed people his badge mm-hmm. and gun, and his FBI badge and gun. So it's like, come on, what are you doing? Right. Bro? So now, what are these? Are these transcripts? What are these taken from? Like, what um, are these transcripts? Are these from phone calls? Are these from? No, no, no. These are the these are these are when when this whole thing falls apart. Eventually, yeah. the homos, you know, there's homicides. Homicide detectives come in. FBI agents come in. They start interviewing people. Yeah, right. okay. These are from interviews. Right. Got it. So they're okay. definitely, they're all definitely interviews. So, uh, so do you remember? So, uh, so what happens is they, they made the phone call. They make the thing go away. Mm-hmm. A few months and months later, they end up, Ellenberger bumps into Farcione and Barrero at the opening of the Hard Rock Cafe in Vegas, right? Because Ellenberg is a big gambler. Yeah. So he bumps into him, and they have a conversation, and, and Farshion's there with, like, some porn star. If you actually see the thing, I actually have the girl woman's name, and I have a little thing, and I put porn star. <laughs> so you can look her up. So, uh, and he and every time one of these, every time he does one of these, he makes sure to tell the, the, the agents, yeah, I was with so-and-so, she's a porn star. So <laughs> he likes to throw that out there. Bag. <laughs> so, yeah. So at, he meets them and he, they see him. And they're a little nervous, but he goes up and he talks to him. He says, listen, he's like, oh, what's going on? He says, look, uh, we're, we're actually working on trying to bust this guy, but we want to rob him. Can you give us some ice? So now he's asking him for ice and, and he goes, yeah. And Ellenberg goes, yeah, I can get you some, some fucking ice. So he gets him some ice because he's like, he thinks to himself, you know, doing a lot of shit. Good to so have him on his side, it's right? It's good to have a dirty agent in your in your pocket, right. right? All day, right? So that's what in this one he talks about. Uh, yeah, he talks about meeting him in the uh, at the Hard Rock Cafe. You know, months and months later, so they end up. So he ends up. Uh, he ends up start starts to kind of deal with them again, and what happens is. Every once periodically, and I, I, you know that's this in the book, somebody will get busted. So they get busted or somebody's getting indicted and these guys will give the, will come to them and say, look, we're dealing with this guy. Is he cool? And they'll, he'll call Farshione. Farshione will call Barrero. Barrero will come back and say, now the guy got busted like three, three weeks ago. He's working with, he's, uh, he's working. Mm. Oh, yeah. 
He's already talking to us. Yeah. So they stopped dealing with him. So at one point, Aria, which Aria was a drug dealer, he was um, supplying ecstasy. And I think, I don't know if he eventually starts doing uh, dealing in ice or not. I can't recall. Mm-hmm. But he was definitely, I have a transcript where they say he's a drug dealer. Several people say he's a drug deal, dealer. And so what happens is, I want to say it's his cousin gets busted with a, a bunch of ice. He gets just red-handed busted. Mm-hmm. So he gets busted and they contact, they contact Farshion and they explain, hey, look, this guy, he got busted. We need, can, you, can you fix it? And although Pete's like, I don't know what ultimately happened. I know that Aria was, they were trying to work it out with them where they were going to pay him. And so here he says, uh, did they call you about Reza? And he says, yeah, called me about Reza. Uh, who called you? Uh, um, Pierre, P, uh, Rossini, sorry. Rossini called me and asked me. AKA if, Pete. Yeah, P, yeah <laughs> I, if, you know, if I could do anything. Pierre, Pete, Rossini. Right. When, uh, when Reza got busted, collect information when Reza got busted and it goes on. He talks about how um, if there was anybody he could pay off to get him out and he said he'd look into it and that sort of thing. He was, did you? He's like, you know, I looked into it and he never really says exactly what happened. But mm. Pete said, I don't know exactly what happened. He goes, but I do know that about three or four weeks later, Rossini or Reza walked out of, out of jail and was never charged or got dropped. So once again, he, you know, something happened. They just paid him. They get out, get off. And Pete said they're regularly giving him 30000 a 100000 So when these guys start getting, so this is, uh, what is this one? Um, so at one point, you know, Pete has a buddy. Rossini has a buddy. Let's just stick to Pete. Yeah. I Let's just call him Pete. Pete. Yeah, that's fine. Pete, Rossini. I've, yeah. ca- I, I, I've I caught on Rossini. to it at this point. I can go point. with Rossini. Yeah. I can do Rossini. Right. I can do it. Whatever, whatever you want to do. Everyone knows by now. Okay, so. Pete Rossini. Rossini gets busted at one. Not busted. He gets like arrested. He, he does. He, he's, he's being indicted in a few different jurisdictions. He gets arrested one day. He gets thrown in jail. Uh, you know, the local, Is this during the raid where they tried to rob the guy's house when they think they stole from Ellenberger? They, tried to, they stole a bunch of shit from Ellenberger and they go back and try to rob and they raid oh, this yeah, dude's yeah, house yeah. and they tie him up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Pete, yeah, Pete was always like, I, I you had to, that whole thing was funny because I kept saying, okay, well, during this home invasion, he was like, stop calling the it. The home invasion, he yeah. Goes, stop calling it a home invasion. I go, why? I go, it was a home invasion. He goes, first of all, he said, I stayed in the car. <laughs> yeah. He was he the goes, getaway driver. Yeah, he goes, I wasn't involved in a home invasion. He said, this was Ellenberger, hired a bunch of guys that went in. It was a burglary. And I go, Pete, they, they kicked in the front door and they tied some guys up and they, yeah. they went and they were looking for drugs. I go, that's a home invasion. He goes, yeah. there was no such thing as home invasion there. He said, please stop saying home invasion. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, it's really making me feel uncomfortable. He said, I wouldn't be involved in a home invasion. I said, yeah, but a, but a strong but arm bar- burglary. <laughs> and he goes, he goes, I waited in the car. <laughs> okay. Still a part of it. <laughs> that's like the guy that says, hey, I know these guys that are robbing banks. How do you know? Well, because I'm the getaway driver. <laughs> yeah, I'm just a getaway driver. So anyway, he ends up getting arrested. No, no, that one, he actually, that whole thing, he, he actually um, pleads it out and, and uh, gets put on probation. And okay. This is later. Okay. Later, he's just being, he's just getting named in different conspiracies. And he's okay. getting in, indicted in a couple different jurisdictions. They're looking for him. So right. at some point, he gets arrested. You got to uh, read the book for the exact dates and mm-hmm. what happens. He gets arrested. So at one point, he gets arrested. Well, Rossini has a friend who's a, he's a police officer. He calls his, so he's been arrested, he's thrown in jail, he calls the police officer. And he says, hey, listen, man. He said, can you call my buddy Mark Farcione and tell him where I'm at and he needs to get me out of jail? So he calls Farcione, Farcione does something. Obviously, Farcione calls Barrero because Farcione's a fucking informant. Right. He can't call the local sheriff's department and say, yeah. hey, that's my buddy, let him out of jail. Yeah. He calls <laughs> Barrero, Barrero probably calls somebody else, like one of his superiors, one of his other buddies, because Barrero's not even in. Farcione can't make anything happen he can't without make any, Barrero. Right, so he, he makes a phone call, he calls back, Pete walks right out of jail. They release him. This is, this is a declaration from this guy, uh, is it Marcius? Marcius? I don't know. Anyway, that's his declaration where he explains that Pete called him from the jail. He made a phone call. He called Mark. Mark said he'd take care of it. Pete walked out of jail. Wow. And, and that back then, 
Pete had already look at the first paragraph. Pete had already told him that he knew a, a, a he knew an, an FBI agent, a dirty FBI agent. He had already told him that. So keep in mind, once again, this has been going on. Dirty agents, I'm yeah. paying them off. Everything's <laughs> going good. It's going smooth. I get arrested. I go to jail. No, nope, they make get a phone right call. Out. They get me out. My buddy gets busted. They do a couple of things. He walks out. Yeah. I need to wow. know who, who I'm dealing with. Is this guy a snitch? You know, I don't know. Can you check out this guy? Hey, here's his name. Sure. Yeah. You know what? Don't deal with him. Yeah. These guys have the hookup. Right. They're just, Big time. Yeah. They're just <laughs> they it's insane. fucking rolling. They, yeah. They got it all. So, and, and at the same time, Mark Farchione and uh and the, what was the other guy's name but Barrero, Barrero those guys are raking in cash from oh, these yeah. guys they're robbing people left and right they're they're just extorting <laughs> these drug dealers for so much money it's ridiculous right right so they're playing both sides this is a guy named double Me- dipping this yeah. is a guy named Meacham okay Meacham when he ultimately gets interviewed a couple years later he talks about how he met Rossini. He knew, he knew Rossini. He knew Rossini was dealing with a, a dirty, a corrupt, a corrupt police officer working. He was working with him. And it says Rossini had once informed Meacham that if he was ever arrested, this police officer could uh, could help him out, uh, but it would cost $100,000. I mean, that's obviously his two FBI agents. Right. Buddies. And, and possibly another guy, which is this other guy, Blum, that we don't mention much, but he's also – the only reason I think he's definitely involved is because there's different jurisdictions. So if you want to know what's going on in this jurisdiction, you have to call over there. Well, mm. Blum's here. Blum's okay, the one who's helping him. him here. And then when they all end up getting investigated, all of these guys take early stress disability. Well, so does Blum. <laughs> Same time. Cl- take it, take it. Early stress disability. Stress disability. I'm stressed. I and can't. all three take the same exact thing. Absolutely. Well, not all three because Farshion's just a fucking. Well, Farshion's not. He doesn't work for the FBI. Yeah, right. he's just a. Right. He's oh, he's working for. Him. He's, so, just, he's just a two bit biker. Right. Thug. Right. <laughs> so, this. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. So, all right. So, let's stop now. So, what happens is we. You read the book, so you know. Mm. Um, Ellenberger is he's he's in desperate straits right he's he's had a couple of bad things happen he's lost some money his gambling debts are out just fucking outrageous uh he's been indicted in multiple jurisdictions feds are looking for him pete said man they were they had him under so much he's on the highway to hell yeah he's Mm -hmm. he's he knew he's in a lot of a lot of trouble but what happens is he ends up getting himself indicted out of hawaii so Barrero and Farshone tell him, "Hey, you've been indicted." Matter of fact, at one point they go to ship some some drugs. Like they have a drug courier, and Farshone calls the guy up and says, calls up Ellenberg and says, "Don't and, and, and Rossini and says, don't let the guy go. They're waiting for him. Like stops it." So he, they say, "Look, there's an indictment. A bunch of people are indicted." He he tells Ellenberger. You know, give me X amount of dollars. I forget what it was, how much it was, but this much money, I'll give you the whole list. Okay, so he calls them up and he gives them the whole list. Barrero actually admits that. So Barrero, in Barrero's, one of Barrero's statements, he tells, yeah, I gave him, uh, I gave him the, the list of people that were indicted or had been indicted. And he in exchange like, for the money? Yeah, in exchange for the money. And that he was shit. one of them. So he, they go to him and they say, look, maybe you ought to consider cooperating. So... He says, okay, I'll think about cooperating, definitely. Well, what happens in the meantime is he's dating this girl named Jenny Braybrooks. Mm-hmm. They end up breaking up. They break up because she finds out that Ellenberger's been cheating on, on yeah. her. And, I mean, he's been cheating on her forever. It's <laughs> yeah. just, there's, it's just nothing stopping this guy. So she, she'd catch him sometimes. He'd lie his way out of it, you know, deny, deny, deny. Yeah. Well, anyway, according to Pete, what ends up happening there is they figure out somebody is telling Jenny what's happened, that he's cheating. So they don't know who. Um, Ellenberger has no clue, but she's not having it. She's done with him. Mm-hmm. Well, so one day Pete and Ellenberger go over to, uh, go over to uh, Aria's house. So they go to Aria's house and they say, and they stop because they're waiting for a call. Remember, they paid, you have to page somebody. There's no yeah. phones. 
No, there's not cell phones really. So they they page this. Well, they, there are cell phones, but they're these huge things. So right. You page they, somebody, you can call them from a yeah, landline. Yeah, guy's got a pager. So oh. they page this this guy who's going to supply him with some meth or something. I forget. It's like when we were in middle school. <laughs> yeah. So they page him, and they're waiting at Aria's house for the phone call. They're sitting there. They're playing games and goofing off, playing Atari or whatever you had back then. Playing Snake. Right. <laughs> so what happens is the phone rings, but they don't answer it. It's not their phone. They let it go to the voice to the answering machine and. A voice comes on and says, oh, Ari, I had such a good time last night. You're so wonderful. The flowers are beautiful. Thank you so much. I, I you know, love you so much. You're the best. And it's Jenny. And it's Jenny. It's Ellen Berger's ex-girlfriend. Yeah. And so he realizes Aria is the one who's been telling her that I've been fucking around. And so he's just devastated. So now Aria's hitting it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They get married. Oh she moves God. in with them. They get married. The whole thing. So okay. he's just like, I mean, it, it, he's distraught. So he's driving around. He's found out. Does he call him out when he hears the message? No. You know what he does? He actually sets the machine so that they they don't listen to it. They 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 set it so he does. Aria doesn't even have a clue. Oh. So when for when Barrero and Farshion kind of come around and say, "Look, you've been indicted, and you know you have to cooperate," he says, "I'll give you Aria. I'll give you Aria." Arya and this other big time drug dealer, mm. neither of which he can probably really give him. Talking about Estes? Uh, no, no, not Estes. Uh, this other guy named okay. Robles. Okay. okay, okay, okay. So I, I'm I'm trying to limit the amount of names. Got it. So another big drug. Dealer. <laughs> okay, there's big, so many fucking there's names so in the story. It's crazy. So he he says, okay. So he goes, I'll give you Robles and this guy. So he starts naming guys, and of course Arya is the one he mainly really, Arya. He wants to give up Arya. He wants Arya bad. So, well, somehow or another, Hit Arya Arya finds out. So what ends up happening is one day Pete's out, he's out, he's partying. Nason finds out that... Who's Nason? Nason is a guy that was basically Ellenberger's kind of do-boy. He was a young kid. He wanted to be an actor. He's like 22, 23 years old. Real good-looking guy. Comes to L.A., wants to be an actor. He's going on auditions. And in the meantime, he's kind of Ellenberger's do-boy. Like, hey, go wash my car. Hey, do this. Hey. And he's giving him money. Uh -huh. He gets free drugs and whatever. You know, he gets to travel with them. And Aria pays for everything. But okay. he's just kind of his assistant. Yeah. So, and he, and, he, and so he finds out that he finds out he gets angry at at, our, at um Ellenberger about something. It's, it's convoluted. It's one of those things. It's like this and this. And this. He gets pissed off at him. Uh, one, he knows also that he's cooperating, and he's going to cooperate against. He's going to cooperate against. Uh, he Aria. knows Ellenberger's cooperating. Yeah, what I say. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, yes. I'm trying to make it yes. clear. Nason knows that Ellenberger is going, is cooperating, or is planning on cooperating. He hasn't done anything yet, but he's planning on cooperating, and he's going to give up. He's going to give up Arya mm -hmm. and several mm -hmm. other people. Nason feels really pissed off about that. There's a lot of other stuff. You know, Ellenberger's kind of, at this point, he's just kind of a jerk to everybody. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's always, he's entitlement issues. He's short man complex, the whole Douche thing. Douchebag, huh. yeah. So he goes, so Nason ends up going to this club where we're seeing he's dancing with his girl. He comes up, he's like, that motherfucker, I'm going to fucking beat his ass. He's like, Shut you, I'm going to fucking kill this motherfucker. And he's like, bro, I'm with my girl. What are you doing? He's like, we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. He's like, fuck this motherfucker. So he leaves. Somebody, I forget who, Alonzo, somebody comes up to him, another one of the, the players, comes up and says, hey, man, Nason, he's like, Nason left a while ago. He's like, uh, he said he was going back to the place. And so Rossini is like, you know what? Fuck, I don't want these guys. They'd been in fights before. Yeah. Fist fights. So he's like, fuck. So he he goes back, goes up, goes back to the condo, goes upstairs, goes and finds him, and everything's fine. Nason's there playing game, Aria shaving or whatever. Okay, fine. So he leaves, hangs out with his girlfriend. The next day he comes back, walks inside. Wait, wait, wait. Aria's, Aria's dead. I mean, I'm sorry. Okay. Shit, Ellenberger. Thank you. He goes back to the condo. Goes back to the condo. Ellenberger is is there. Everything's fine. Nason's there. Ellenberger's there. Everything's fine. So he says, "Okay, everything's no fine." No sort of confrontation. No confrontation. At all. None. So he leaves. He said, "The next day, though, I I spend the night with my girl. I come back the next day. I walk in. So he walks in. Ellenberger's dead. He's laying in the middle of the of the uh, bedroom. One of the bedrooms. Dead." He said, his, he said his neck was twisted in a way that he it said as soon as, as soon as I saw it, it was like he's un, very unnatural the way he said it. I was like, yeah. I immediately I knew, oh, my God, he's dead. He's like, I ran. I tried to fucking wake him up. Are you okay? He's like, but it, immediately I realized he's dead. Yeah. So he immediately makes start, he immediately calls Farcione. First thing. First thing <laughs> calls Farcione because he's got a dead body 
His best friend is dead in his meth lab. I can't call the police. <laughs> right. I have a life sentence in meth. Yeah. Right here. Not to mention the money and everything else. Can't call the police. That's not that's not an option. No. So uh he ends up calling so he calls he calls uh Farcion. Farcion apparently he said he said it sounded like he already knew what was going on. Yeah. Come to find out later, of course, Nason had had he said Nason says they got into an a fight. This is one of many versions Nason has said, by the way. So they got into a fight and he ended up breaking his neck. He mm-hmm. said, but it was probably broken. He said, but he, he strangled him, yeah, snapped his neck. Snapped his neck. He probably got him in a headlock, snapped his neck, whatever yeah. it was. He killed him. So Pete doesn't know what to do. You know, Nason's no fucking help. He's a kid. Yeah. So, but the the point is, is that Nason, if you look at all the phone records and you read the phone book, remember, Pete calls him, Nason calls back, he calls Arya. Arya calls Escoboza or someone or Alonzo. Alonzo calls John's, uh, um, Ellenberger's phone and lets it ring and ring and ring and ring because they're trying to figure yeah, out if he's dead. Yeah, that part was confusing to me. That well, part was confusing. Yeah, because they're trying to figure out, is he really dead? You know, Nason just said he's dead, but we don't know if he's dead. Right. Arya doesn't want to call. So he gets this guy to call. Never answers. So, okay, fine. So in the aftermath, they end up, Pete ends up calling this guy named Harrison, right? What was Harrison's first name? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't even remember how Harrison got into this yeah, story. Well, because he was a drug dealer okay. and, and he, somebody knows somebody. So he calls Harrison. He said to be, he said, to be honest, he said, we called a bunch of people. <laughs> He's like, we called, he said, nobody wanted to help us. Oh, is Harrison one of the guys who got disposed of his body? Yeah, he calls okay. Harrison. Harrison says, I'll come with a couple of guys. It's going to be this much money. Mm. I'll get rid of the body. Okay. So they come. They dump Ellenberger's body. Package up the body. Uh, they dump the body in a, in a dumpster. And it ends up getting, they never find it. I thought they. No, no, well, the other guy gets dumped in a, body, in a dumpster too. They're both in dumpsters. Yeah, but one guy gets found, one guy doesn't. Los Angeles dumpsters. Yes. You never <laughs> oh know. Hit or miss when you're disposing of bodies. You got a whole bunch of desert out there, but you know they're yeah. lazy. Yeah, so, just throw it in a dumpster. Right, throw it in a dumpster. You got a fifty-fifty chance that. Yeah, you know, right. They, they wrap Christ. them up in a. What do they wrap them up in? In a. Be real quick. Wrap them up in a in a sleeping sleeping bag. bags. Right. Oh. And what's so fucked up is that Pete, like whenever I would say, oh shit, I just fucking hit the camera. <laughs> yeah, but I, I don't think you make sure moved that. it. What's messed up about it is that we would be in the library. Uh, at Coleman yeah. and Pete and I would be I would be asking questions and I'd say something like we'd you know be arguing back and forth or joking around and he'd say something well what do your co-defendants say about you and I go and I go listen my, all my co-defendants are alive <laughs> and he'd look at me and he'd go and he'd look at me and he'd go fuck he'd go all I did was help move the body and I was like <laughs> that doesn't of course, you got all these other inmates around going, what the fuck did he just say? And I'd be like, stop fucking saying that. You need to stop saying that. It doesn't help your case. No. You know, it doesn't, that's not the kind of thing that you come off, you can't say that and come off well. No, 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 no. <laughs> you know, so he, uh, so anyway, so yeah, we've got phone records of all of these guys calling each other back and forth, back and forth. Right after they found Ellenberger dead. Right. <clears throat> we got Arya's pager. You have the records of them calling uh, calling Farcion. Calling Farcion, calling Barrero, where Barrero calls. Do they have a direct where, line to Barrero? Oh yeah, you can call. Pete's called, directly called the, the task force. Oh God, and okay. And talked to him for like five minutes, ten minutes. So, so if Barrero's like, oh, I've never spoken to that guy. <laughs> Called you five fucking times yeah. in the last two weeks. He didn't talk to you for thirty. So seconds. we have phone records right after you found your best friend, fucking crystal meth dealer, dead. You called an FBI agent right after that. Right. Yeah. Right. Records. Thought, records of that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. This is. These are the records. Um. Yeah. Ellen. Uh, see. Uh, Arias pager. Farcione's pager. Barrero's pager. But if you keep going, Barrero's office at B and E right here. That's these right here. Okay. And they have the duration. This was twelve minutes. Twenty two minutes. Um, anyway, okay, so right. and th- this goes on and on because the only reason the reason this is important is that 
basically when the homicides start to get investigated and there's a link to the actual agents, these guys say tell the homicide detective, oh, we haven't talked to him in months. No, it's been four or five months. We haven't talked to him since we saw him in mm. Vegas or wherever. Yeah, yeah, no, no. There's Bullshit, nothing. I got phone yeah. records. Well, there's ton, There's a lot of phone records here that say, <laughs> you know, so. Yeah, that's weird. Phone records. That's yeah, super weird. That happens. But keep in mind, too, back then, like, you wouldn't do, I would, you wouldn't be that stupid now, yeah. would you? Because you know immediately, you know, oh, fuck that. They'll grab my phone. They'll do this. Oh, they'll yeah. just go on the computer and figure it out. But back then, look at these phone records. That was man. a process right, right, right. to get those. This is like, you know. You know, dot matrix and shit. You know, yeah. they, they could purge it once; it's gone. You know, yeah. here nothing's gonna, we're gonna be disappear. Right. We're gonna disappear. So, okay. So once again, Aria cell. Okay. So I'm gonna put this aside too. So here's what happens: is uh, Sydney. Oh yeah, this is the one. So after that we're going, happens, we're going. We're shuffling through documents here. Okay, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Yeah. I'm just trying to make the people who are listening and not watching the video so they understand what's going on. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. So, you know. So it, keep in mind, too, later you're going to realize everybody blames Rossini. First, they all say he, he shot him. He shot Ellenberger. Ellenberger was never shot. Right. Everybody, even when they eventually get the guy, and all the documents say shot, shot. All the guys are saying, yeah, no, no, he shot but him. But they never found the body, so how would they know? No, well, because when Nathan pleads guilty, yeah. he says, I choked him to death. Why would you say that? Nathan said he choked Nathan him. Nathan says he personally choked him to death. Remember, we know he broke his neck, right? We right. know he choked him to death. So ultimately, though, I mean, even though everybody points at Rossini, when ultimately Nathan finally says, yes, he, yes, I killed him, they say, okay, well, what'd you shoot him with? Where's the body? He goes, no, I didn't shoot him. I choked him to death. Same thing Rossini's been saying the whole time. He wasn't shot. He was choked to death. So who made up the whole shot? You, you, uh, okay, we're getting to yeah, that. Yeah, we're yeah. getting there. They're trying to make both the murders look the same, like it's the same person. Got the same it. Thing. Got it. So <clears throat> this, so right afterwards, if if Rossini <clears throat> shot him, and he's this cold blooded murderer, right? That he killed him because he knows he's cooperating. So he killed him. That's what everybody says. He's killed him. He killed him because he's cooperating. And Rossini was afraid he was gonna cooperate against him. So he shoots him and gets rid of the body. Well, if that's the case, this woman here, when Pete goes to to see. Um, to see Wayne Harrison, right? This is his girlfriend who says that Wayne tells her that Pete had just found his friend dead. And P she says specifically that Pete looked very sad, that he looked sad, confused. And, you know, uh, he has to talk to Wayne alone. And then Wayne came back and told her he just found his, he found his, his best friend dead. I wow. got to get rid of the body. So that's what... So if Pete's this cold-blooded murderer, he walks in there practically in tears because right. he just found his best friend dead. Wow. So what happens – so after he found, finds him dead how do, and he calls Farshion, right? what plays out after that? Like what's – what comes after that? Everybody starts saying that he went to Mexico. I don't think I really mentioned that. They it, say that Ellenberger went to Mexico. Ellenberger went okay. to Mexico. Whenever somebody asks, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, he's cool. He's down in, he's down in uh, Mexico. He's in Mexico. Mex Everybody's saying Mexico, Mexico. Okay. Keep in mind, too, is, you know, people start, your family starts looking for you. Right, right. But there's no body. Right. And this is a guy who would take off to Brazil, which he'd done with Pete. I have pictures of them in Brazil. You know, he goes because Pete's, uh, his, his, uh, he's Brazilian. So. Mm. They would go to Brazil and be there for two or three weeks. And, you know, these are not guys that are keeping in touch with anybody. You know, they're just doing whatever they want. They're living. They got a ton of money. They're, right. you know, they're risk takers. Whenever they want. Right. So this is a guy that uh, that Pete says, this guy, uh, Sidney uh, Berman, says that he knew Pete. He knew Rossini, and Rossini had told him if he ever got in trouble, he knew a dirty FBI agent. Mm -hmm. uh, told him that he had ripped him off. Uh, to, uh uh, go that took dope and money and let him go. He stated that uh, Rossini said that the the uh, federal agent could get a list of informants. Uh, that the agent was crooked and would do it for money. And this is a guy. Keep in mind, he's not he's not in trouble. He's just just young guy shooting the shit yeah man i know a fucking different like i know an agent yep. he'll check that guy out for you yep. give me the number he makes a fucking phone call boom 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 yep give me a couple grand yeah he's good yep. you can deal with him so I mean, this is just this is just dirty agents okay you know well the only reason i keep harping on it is because later the government's like 
it's it's all bullshit. No, no, they're not. They're not dirty agents. No, right. that's, right, that's right, all, right. It's all bullshit. It's yeah. not true. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of paperwork that points yeah, a lot to of otherwise. paperwork says otherwise. A lot of guys walking out of jail. A lot of cases getting busted. A lot of yeah. you know. And why is Pete telling everybody this guy ripped me off and stole all my fucking check money? Check Barrero's bank account. <laughs> right. So at some point he starts dealing with another guy named Lance Estes. Okay. All right. And so who is Lance Estes? Lance, he's a drug dealer out of San Francisco. Okay. So. You know, Estes is a, a you know works out all the time. He's a big guy, good looking guy. They're all fucking good looking guys. They're all driving Porsches and Ferraris, yeah. and it's it's ridiculous the amount of money. I mean, they're superstars. They're all rock stars. They're all working out. It's like what what would you do if you were making a hundred thousand dollars a month and had nothing to do and tons Same of drugs shit. and women? <laughs> Be a maniac. Yeah. <laughs> so these guys are maniacs. Let alone you're in your early twenties, <laughs> yeah. right? So these guys are maniacs. So he explains what what ends up happening is. Lance Estes is dealing with Rossini, and he ends up getting busted. He and his best friend get busted. Get, you know, they they get they get busted by the uh, by the local um, uh, task force. Well, when they get busted, they've heard about you know they've heard about you know they know Rossini. They've heard about this dirty agent, so they contact him. And Pete says to him, "Look, he can get rid of your case for a hundred thousand dollars." So Lance is cocky, and you know Estes is cocky, and he's like. You know, I'll give you 50000 up front, but I want to meet this motherfucker. You know, he's a fucking tough guy. Mm-hmm. So they go and they meet and he meets him and, and first he meets Farcione and Barrero's across the street. Uh, it's never confirmed that Barrero's across the street, but we know from several different uh, different uh, reports that there was a guy, there was an FBI, or there, was an, there was someone across the street. We assume it's Barrero. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he ends up telling him, uh, he ends up, Pulling a gun on Estes because Estes kind of gets in his face and he pulls out his badge and sticks a gun in his face. He goes, "Motherfucker!" He says, "I'll put a he goes, I'll put a bullet in you right now and I'll put this piece on you." He goes, "You see my partner over there? He'll say he saw the whole thing. You pulled it on me and I fucking killed you. He goes, now back your fucking ass up." So he's like, "Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. so he realizes, okay, he's definitely an agent. He's got this guy over here. He's got this. Mm-hmm. He's got the badge. He's I'm done." So right. He's like, "This guy's for real." So they set up a time. They give him fifty. They meet at a hotel or a motel. They meet at a motel. Give him fifty thousand dollars. They he gets a room here. He gets a room here. They meet here. They come down. They give the you know, it's a whole fucking spy thing. Right. Yeah. So, so they they give him fifty grand. And these are reports of the guys talking about how Lance told Lance or Estes told him that he had given fifty thousand dollars in cash to Rossini and that the money was a down payment and was going to blah blah. So this is him telling one of his buddies, "I gave Rossini gave the money." It's a down payment to to get my my case quashed. Okay. So we're good. I I just pay 50 grand down. We're going to get it taken care of. What he doesn't realize is that the guy he's telling, which is his best friend, is already gone to the authorities and said, I know we're supposed to be working with you, but my buddy's still selling drugs, and he's now dealing with that dirty FBI agent. So he's now double-crossed him. Yeah. So now the authorities are like, whoa, you double-crossed this. But you're in bed with an FBI or some FBI agent you just gave 50 grand to. So that helps. So so did he get his case squashed? Did he end up paying him the full 100 grand and getting that whole thing taken care of? He does give him 100 grand, but it, okay. it, what ends up happening is, I mentioned that Lance with this. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, this is his girlfriend, by the way. So this is Lance, this is Lance Estes' girlfriend which is um, uh, Monica Trejo. Okay. And she tells a grand jury later, uh, you mentioned that Lance had met with this supposed FBI agent or whatever to get him off, and he was convinced by credentials. And she says, by credentials, did he he see a badge? And she says, yeah, he saw a badge. Okay. Boom. Gave him the money, got the money. There's a dispute with Estes. I'm, I'll try and start rap, uh, try and get really okay. start cutting through it. Yeah. There's a dispute with Estes. Okay. Between Farcione and Estes. Estes basically tries to back out. I want my money back. <laughs> You're out of your fucking mind. Yeah. So they go back and forth, back and forth. Well, what happens is Estes ends up going to the police or in, and ends up basically saying that he's considering. He finds out because his the other guy told the agents that he's working with a dirty FBI agent, it get, it filters down to Barrero and Farcione that Estes has told somebody 
and they know he's dealing with it. He just gave somebody 50 grand for a, a dirty agent. So fuck. So they, they say the deal's off. They get into a huge argument. Rossini puts it back together. He says, okay, now it's another $100,000. So give him 50. He's like, okay. So I think he gives him another 50. And then he's, he's going to give him the last 50. He's, so there's a huge dispute where they have a meeting. And Rossini's at the meeting. Harrison's at the meeting. Uh, Farcione shows up. Farcione said, Harrison's saying, let's just kill this guy. Farcione says... Talk, talk, talking about who? Let's just kill him. Talking who. about Estes. He's saying, let's just kill him. Because he's now talking about testifying against Farcione, Farcione, Farcione and, yeah. and Barrero. So he basically says, let's just kill him. And Pete's, or Rossini's trying to talk him out of it. He goes to Farcione. Farcione says, okay, kill him. If he doesn't bring the money, kill him. But don't kill him in San Francisco because he lives in San Francisco. Kill him here because Harrison's talking about going to San Francisco, going to his house, killing him and killing his girlfriend if she's Jesus. there. Rossini's saying, because Rossini's like, what if his girlfriend's there? And he's, well, she has to die too. He's like, nah, nah. And Farcione goes, nah, nah, nah. Bring him up. Bring him up here. If he doesn't have the money, kill him. Because if he doesn't bring the cash, kill him. Yeah. Okay, fine. No problem. So he flies up. He shows up. He flies from down from San Francisco so, to L.A. Uh, yeah, from San Francisco to L.A. Okay. They're all going to meet. He's supposed to bring the money. He says he's got the money. Pete thinks he's got the money. Rossini thinks he's got the money. Rossini says he's got the money. Everything's going to be okay. He's going to give him the money. It's good. He gets there. They pick him up. Wayne picks him up. They walk inside. Everything seems like it's going to be okay. He walks into the kitchen. Wayne pulls a pistol out and shoots him in the back of the head. Boom. Estes is dead. Estes is dead. Now, right before they killed him, wasn't there something about 86? Like yeah, code, yeah. code word 86? They send a code back. So they, they, they page, like the guys in the house get pages saying 86, 86 on their pagers, which, you know, to 86 to kill right. him. Get rid yeah. of him. So, so the one guy goes and starts up the, the uh, motorcycle, starts revving the motorcycle so but, nobody's going to hear the... So when they were, why did they send the eighty six? Because they re, they realized he didn't have the fifty thousand dollars in cash. Right, yeah, he's got a cashier's check. He brings a fucking cashier. But they check. didn't see they they didn't see <laughs> cash, so they figured he doesn't have the money, so let's kill him. No, they see a cashier's check, but, but, but they need cash. Not, but they didn't find the cashier's check till after he was dead, right? No, he tells them in the car. Like oh, he does. Check. Okay, so okay. I right, thought it was only after he was dead. No, right okay. then he knows. Uh, um, Harrison knows. Okay, well. He's got to die. Yeah. Like, we got to kill him. So that's when he pages these guys, 86. I'm coming and we're going to kill him. Well, Pete actually goes in the garage. I actually have a report from one guy who says after they got the 86s that Pete went and hid in the garage. You know, so he's kind of like making fun of them. So anyway, he ends up shooting them in the head. And in the back of the head. Right? Back of the head. Yeah. Spinning over to like, I don't know, get to the, something out of the refrigerator or something that I think. He said and he shot him in the back of the head. So they wrap him up in the sleeping bag. Keep in mind, they Farcione said, "Don't let him find the body. Don't let him find the body. Get the fifty grand. Don't let him, and if they kill him, you know, if if, if he doesn't have it, then kill him and don't don't kill him in San Francisco and don't let him anybody find the body because it works out pretty good if they don't find the body. Then he could just he could be anybody. He could be, he could he, be could taken off. Right. We don't know. So so yeah, uh, they wrap him up. They throw him in a dumpster. And uh, a homeless guy finds him, like the next day or something. And so now the detectives come in. And, you know, the, there's a huge difference between a regular cop and a detective. So a homicide detective is the elite. You know, they're, they're methodical. Right. You know, you, you might want... You, they're you, trying to solve the murder so, for and, real. And, and nothing else matters. Right. So they, they don't, don't care they don't who care. it is, I don't who's care if involved. you sell drugs. I don't right. care if you're a credit card counter. I'm not going to fucking bust you for any of that. That means nothing. Right. You get everybody gets a pass when it comes to murder. Just help me. So, uh, they come in. Uh, this is the Estes murder. Um, okay, Lance Estes was arrested. He so this is remember Lance was arrested. He agreed to cooperate. Okay, remember we talked about that. So remember Lance. This is him being arrested, and then uh, the government Estes. saying Estes. Estes saying he was arrested. Uh, he got arrested, and he was going to cooperate. Mm -hmm. This is. Uh, Michael Estes, who talks about how uh, um, that's his brother. This is his brother. Okay, who's talks who also talks about him being arrested and him 
he was dealing with a guy. He was dealing with someone named Blum. He was dealing with an agent who was dealing with Blum. Blum's the other guy I told you. He's above yep. Barrero. Right. He's another guy like Barrero in a different jurisdiction. Okay. So another FBI agent who's giving information, supposedly, right? I mean, based yeah. on all this stuff. So he ends up getting killed. His body's disposed of. It's, it's, uh, it's over. He's gone. So what do we got here? I got a bunch of documents. They're, they're just kind of random. I'll just go through them real okay. quick. So eventually, Pete ends up getting busted. He gets arrested for something stupid. And before they can get him out of jail, before Farcione and Barrero can get him out of jail, he gets ID'd and Agent Alapa flies in from Hawaii and tries to interview him. And so she tries to interview him and he said, Rossini said, states you know, to the agent Alapa that uh, he had nothing to say to her. Uh, he wasn't going to speak to the government. You know, he wanted... Uh, he was certain that Farshian was going to take care of it. He was 100% sure. Keep in mind, they show up. First, if you're smart and you're guilty and you're looking at a lot of time, you better cooperate. You're not beating this in trial. Yeah. Not with this, these kind of numbers, not with these kinds of people, not with this amount of people. Everybody around him is getting busted. Yeah. He's been indicted in multiple jurisdictions. You're just done. You better expect to fucking either die in prison or come out when you're in your 60s. Yeah. So, or you cooperate. He tells him, he tells her basically, kiss my ass, I'm good. Because he knows. <laughs> he's got to get out of jail. Right, he's got all them guys. My boys are going to get me out. Right, right. they always cost do. cost me 100 grand. I'm, I'm sitting on millions in yeah. cash. I'm good. I'm good. Well, they, so a lot of time goes by. Kick rocks, lady. <laughs> yeah, some time goes by. And he's getting phone calls from Reza. He's getting calls from uh, Aria. He's, he's talking to guys on the phone. I don't know if it's Aria. He was talking to, was it Reza? He's talking to people on the phone. The people are answering his phone calls, and everybody's telling him, hang tight, they're working on it, they're working on it. Well, eventually, he comes to the conclusion after a few months. Yeah, nobody's working on it. Nobody's working on it. <laughs> yeah. His, he gets a new attorney comes in. He tells the attorney he tells the attorney what's going on, but so he's like, just hold it off. I'm going to get this whole thing quashed. The new attorney's like, are you fucking crazy? Yeah. What do you mean you, you got dirty agents? He's like, let me go tell the U.S. attorney. He's like, no, no, no. They're going to get this whole thing quashed. I mean, they've got me knocked out of, out of jail. They've had me released a couple of times now. I'm good. They have my buddy uh, like, oh, I'm, I'm good. They're like, you're fucking crazy. Well, weeks and weeks and weeks and months go by. Fuck. And he starts to realize, oh, fuck, I'm done. Yeah. So he says, so finally he comes to the conclusion, okay, I got a real problem here. Nobody is answering his phone anymore, by the way. They, they stop answering his phone. So when everybody stops answering your phone, he you get knows. a little desperate. Yeah. So he gets a little flipped out, and he's like, fuck. He realizes he's done. Right. People, Other guys are getting busted. Guys are coming in the prison, in there. So he says, okay, fuck it. And he contacts uh, his attorney. He says, okay, I'll cooperate. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I can cooperate against some dirty FBI agents. Well, they come in. And they say, um, "No, we're not. We're not. You can plead to a life sentence, and that's it." He said, and then we'll we'll talk about it. He's like, "Oh, you're you're crazy." What happens is it filters down through all the U.S. attorneys and everything to Barrero and Farcione, and Farcione finds out, and Barrero find out that he's talking about cooperating against dirty law enforcement. So Farcione calls everybody together. He calls, you know, the guys that I'm trying not to use too many names. He calls everybody, you know, everybody. Meacham, he calls this guy, he calls that guy. So, whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa. He calls everybody together and they all meet Harrison. They all meet everybody involved. Nason. Even Nason, who killed mm -hmm. Ellenberger. Killed Ellenberger. Harrison killed Estes. Nason killed Ellenberger. Calls everybody together, every, uh, the whole crew. Family powwow. Right. All right. This is John Alonzo talking about how, well, wait, you know what? Is it better? It's better like this because, because this is the one. Okay. He meets at his girlfriend's house, right? His girlfriend's name is uh, Odalis Melendez. So everybody meets there. She's in her bedroom while these guys are all meeting. And there's several meetings, but there's one meeting in particular she talks about where she talks about how everybody got together. She also she knows everybody uh -huh. except for this one guy named John something, another friend of Rossini's in L.A. She says he's from uh, he's from um, 
He's from uh, uh, Beverly Hills. Well, Pete says that's got to be Aria. It's the only guy he knew that was a friend that lived in that area. That so he's like he probably came in and just said his name is Sean. He was, but it's he's assuming that's Aria. So right, L.A. near Beverly Hills. Mm-hmm. You know Aria. So and this is uh, Alonzo. Uh, so she's got she names all these guys and she can hear them discussing Rossini. She hears them talking about Rossini. So they're talking about like, well, how do you think Rossini killed these guys? Keep in mind the two guys. That actually, that actually killed him are in the room. So she's <laughs> yeah. not quite hearing. She's hearing bits and pieces. Well, when they leave there, by the way, uh, one of the people that shows up, I told you, is, is Farshion. Farshion shows up. He has his little meeting. And in the meeting, and this is exhibit uh, 50. By the end of that meeting, everybody has agreed that, that Rossini committed the murders. He killed both guys. So Farcione goes in and says, there are homicide detectives investigating. They're wanting to talk to people. They're going to be talking to you guys. They're going to find you. They're going to talk to you. When they do, you just need to tell them Rossini. You don't have to tell them that you necessarily saw it, but Rossini or you heard or whatever. We need to point to Rossini. He's right now trying to get us fucked up. We get fucked up. I guarantee you, you guys are all getting life sentences. Yeah. Keep in mind, they still think he's an FBI agent. So we're telling you right now, Rossini shot him. That's what happened. He shot him. He helped disp- dispose of the body. He shot him, disposed of the body. That's what you're going to go with. They said, okay, cool. So everybody says, okay. So immediately when these guys get interviewed, they immediately all start saying that, keep in mind, Pete didn't have a gun. Yeah. Pete said, I've never had, he goes, he's, I, he's, I had a gun one time. He's like, it was like a, you know, you see, like you know I'm saying, he's like, he's not a gun guy. Right, yeah, he yeah. is at that level dealing with those guys. You don't really bring guns. Yeah. You're, you're when you show up with 50 kilos of ice or something, you don't bring a gun because you're just in that much more trouble. You're probably already dead. It's usually you're, yeah. you're dealing with, if you right. don't, if you, you don't deal with people that you need to bring a gun. Right. So anyway, this guy talks about how. He heard, he heard rumors that Pete killed him, that Pete, the guy owed him money. So Pete killed him. What kind of gun did Pete have? Did Pete have a gun? Yeah, yeah, Pete had a gun. Pete had a nine millimeter, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so he talks about that. This is, this is one guy. This is uh, Alonzo says that. Uh, let's see, this is, um, this is, uh, so then eventually, and I'm, I'm going to fast forward this because Oh, yeah, so this guy, uh, Odessa Melinda, she says again that Harrison said that he had he had dealt with the cleanup of the body. She, mm-hmm. He admits that he cleaned up, and that, but he says Rossini killed him. Like, why and at what point did they go to law enforcement and say you know, that they, Pete killed these people? They didn't go. They're, they know that law enforcement showing up. At some okay. point, okay. Homicide, question them. homicide detectives are leaving cards on your thing. Mm. You come home one day, they're sitting outside your house. They start getting picked up. They mm. get Mainly about Estes. Huh? Right about Estes because right. Ellenberger's, you know, no one, not, just, no one knew what happened to Ellenberger. Right. Well, they kind of know, but they don't know. It's Nobody. just rumors. They right. found the body of Estes, right. so that's. So th- this guy here says, um, he says that Ellenberger. They called Ellenberger Beetle, by the way. So Beetle. he says, you know, Beetle in Beetle's room. He says that he after that after you know, Pete killed him. He saw the blood stains. There was no blood stains. He was, had his neck broken. Right. right. So there was a huge pool of blood from the gunshot wound that didn't actually happen um so okay so all these guys start losing start um failing polygraphs by the way uh, <laughs> yeah so the story's falling apart right harrison harrison who shot estes says that that you know um that pete did it pete did it gunshot wound uh you know in the head this is a footnote is that 70 87 and 70 talk about it uh so i mean see the thing is is that i like i could go fucking on and on and on anyway so eventually what happens is nason uh did oh, did i mention to so remember how i told you nason gave s- several stories yeah and this is where potentially aria shows up because what happens is nason says that aria gave him thirty thousand dollars and nason like leaves town mm. he gets caught in florida Somewhere. Hmm. I was getting caught in Florida. So <laughs> it's a place to go. So <laughs> I left Florida. So so he he says that 
Arya gave him $30,000. This is like the day after he killed uh, Elmer. Mm-hmm. So he gets 30 grand. Well, one of the things he also he also does is when he takes off, he starts telling, he meets a bunch of girls, several girls. There's three of them. I only printed out two of these. He tells the girls, they're like, oh, so what do you do for a living? He tells them, I'm a hit man. I kill people. Oh, you kill people? Keep in mind, he's like 20, 22 years old. He's just this fucking idiot. So he's bragging about being a hitman. These are this is these girls saying that someone gave him thirty. That Nason told her he killed someone for thirty thousand uh, dollars. This one here, she doesn't say. I don't think she says how much that he got, but did say when she said, uh, "What are you doing for a limit?" He joked about being a hitman. How are you uh, making money? He said, "I'm killing people." <laughs> uh, so, Ellenberger. <laughs> Fucking douchebag. What an idiot. Um, so, yeah, she says here, too, he was uh, he was paid to commit a murder. So he's telling people he's killing people. Yeah. Now, he later says, he also told, but Pete said he, what he, the only thing he ever told me, Pete says, is that they got into an argument, and he choked him out, and he ended up breaking his neck. Pete had no clue he was paid to do it. Yeah, Pete, Pete's like, I didn't find out later till stuff starts coming out. That people are saying he's telling them he killed the guy. He's I didn't know that Arya gave him thirty thousand. I didn't know he told these girls that he got paid thirty thousand to kill him. Yeah. He goes, I didn't know any of that. He's I found that out later just as people are filing motions and things. Here's the thing also, keep in mind Pete's in prison now thinking I'm really in a bad spot. Yeah. Government doesn't want to work with me. Everybody's no one's you know, bailing him out. Nobody's bailing me out. Nobody's answering my phone calls. Yeah. Guys that I know are getting arrested and showing up here in the jail with me yeah. that are on on the conspiracies with me. We're all staring at each other. Who's going to cooperate? <laughs> Everybody's saying the same thing. Oh, fuck that. I'm staying strong, bro. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah. Everybody's singing them. Yeah, you see your lawyer a lot. <laughs> yeah. You know, for a guy who's – you keep going and leaving for your to see your lawyer. So, <laughs> uh, so eventually what, what ends up happening is this. Ultimately, Nason ends up filing some paperwork. And in the paperwork, Pete, ult- Pete gets the paperwork. You have to understand when you, you know, the cases are long, so you learn things slowly. People aren't right. talking to each other. But as you can, if I can read your paperwork, <clears throat> it helps give insight into what happened in my case. So Nason eventually files paperwork where he explains, he explains about getting paid $30,000 from Aria. He says for a drug transaction. Pete says that's not possible because we were the ones who were supplying all the drugs. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't know if he was selling drugs, but whatever. The other thing is he says that he was called to a meeting at Wayne Harris's girlfriend's house named uh, Odalis M- Melendez and that there was a whole bunch of people there and that uh, any he, he names them off, you know, John Alonzo, this guy, Dean Zurich or something, uh, Mar- uh, George M- Marzik, uh, Mark Farcion was there, Wayne Harrison, a bunch of guys were there, and that he says specifically, Farcion said that Rossini was cooperating. He was an ungrateful bastard, I think, somewhere they say this, huh. and that they, they need to put the murders off on him. And Nason came there with, like his two, with three of his cousins. He shows up with his three cousins. So they're all there while this discussion's going on. And Mark Farchion tells them that they have to put everything off on Rossini. Rossini killed him. Rossini shot him in the head. Blah, blah, blah. Tells them all the same thing that Melendez says. Same thing other guys say. There was multiple meetings. And Nason gets so upset about it, he doesn't like the idea of frame. Remember, he didn't like the cooperation thing either. He didn't like Ellenberger was cooperating. Right? Yeah. He doesn't like the fact that now these guys are saying, we're going to put it off on Rossini when he knows Rossini didn't do it. Right. But they're saying, look, you too, though. That gets you off. This guy's yeah. too honest. Right. He is, yeah. He's, uh, he's the kind of guy that He's the up, opposite of a uh, shrinker. Yeah, he's the kind of guy that <laughs> ends up doing 25 years for being so honest. So uh, uh, John Ellenberger, FBI, first young, grand jury, blah, blah. So- in this is when he talk in his 2255 he talks about how he was brought in and told this and he didn't like the idea of it at all and so he takes his $30,000 and he takes off when he takes off that's you know he takes off uh, he eventually gets caught well so this is him saying so we've got multiple people there's also several other people say these meetings that, uh, occurred that all these guys got together and they all decided Rossini did it he shot him mm-hmm. so 
that goes on and on. This is a copy of his three cousins who were there. Scott, Scott, and uh, Armadio. And they all give affidavits, which say the same thing, that they were at the meeting. Who's three cousins? Uh, Nason's three cousins okay. were there. And they say they were at the meeting with all of this group of guys, and they were discussing their legal strategies and what was happening and that they and about some guy who had basically killed somebody and that he had shot them all. And so, you know, they don't really quite know what's going on. It's just we were there. And this is what happened. The FBI agent was there. By the way, this is when Robert Mueller comes into the picture. Okay. So Mueller, the... There was something called there was a Saprecha prong. There was, there was this guy that ends up there's a there's a whole thing about dirty agents in this office. So Mueller comes in to kind of clean up the office. They the uh, the Department of Justice says, look, Mueller, we're going to send you over there to clean it up. So Mueller comes in, he fires a bunch of people. He now, meanwhile, there's yeah, there's because there's multiple cases like this going on where there's oh, dirty through, agents throughout the whole United States, but even in this area in his jurisdiction oh, okay but there, there's in there in new york there in whitey bulger is happening at this time okay or whitey bulger's bribing an fbi agent i think uh, agent Connolly or something like that uh so you know there's all this is this is happening in multiple jurisdictions the department of justice and is this is during moeller's reign the whole whitey bulger thing is during is that's m also during that was all investigated by by moeller uh moeller was the uh one of the assistant u.s attorneys or one of the he was he was in charge of the task force one of the task force that was investigating right. okay um bulger so bulger. he was involved in that but you know he's way up here and yeah. he just happened to be one of the many guys in the chain i don't think he necessarily had anything okay. super to do with it there, there were allegations but you know there uh, who knows right all right listen I, I can only solve one thing at a time <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what what ends up happening is let's eat this elephant one spoon at a time one spoonful at a time <laughs> so this guy okay so this is a document where Mueller comes in and they start asking for evidence. So now they've arrested, they've arrested Harrison. Um, uh, they've arrested um, Wayne Harrison, the guy who killed Estes. Right. And they've arrested uh, Frank Nason. So Nason's been arrested. Harrison's been arrested. They are kind of joining forces and they're saying, look, they're going with what's called a... Uh, it's called a um, public authority defense, wherein they say, we thought we had authority to do what we were doing. And initially, keep in mind, at this point, they failed their polygraph exams. Yeah, Everybody's failed. Some of these guys failed like three of them. Okay, if you go on the website, you'll see I've got one after another. Yeah. The story keeps changing, changing. So they're like, no, uh, so-and-so, Pete killed him. Yeah. Okay, then it's, okay, no, Pete didn't kill him. Harrison killed him. Uh, I saw the blood. No, I didn't see the blood. No, he killed him. No, this. No, this. So they keep changing, changing. Every time they fail it, eventually they come clean there and basically as clean as they can. Yeah. Harrison killed him, and but it was Rossini who ordered it. Can't say the FBI. We can't say the FBI ordered it because that would be a major fucking problem for us. Yeah. We've already been told. <laughs> so it's somebody. You, you and you know why would you say anybody ordered it? Well, you have to say somebody because if if I'm Harrison and I say. I killed him. Well, why'd you kill him? Right. Somebody told me to. Somebody told me to kill him. Yeah. It's better for me to say that Danny told me to do it because then I get to cooperate against Danny. Mm -hmm. So you don't really want me because I wouldn't have killed him on my own. Right. Mm. Danny did it. Right. You got a card to play. Right. So that's what happens is they all start pointing at Rossini. So this is this is the document where they start. They, they go over... Farcione's role, they go over uh, Barrero's role, they go, they start explaining. So if you read this, you start to realize very, very quickly that they're focusing in on law and dirty law enforcement. And this is what, this is what within weeks, and this, at this exact time is when Mueller shows up. There's a, there's a huge article, there's a new sheriff in town, and yeah. Mueller's a new breed. And, yeah. you know, you keep in mind, he's young, he's younger than, he's not young, young, but he's probably in his late 30s, early 40s, probably. So he's coming in. He's going to clean up the office. None of, no more of this fucking blame shifting and, and uh, dirty agents. And he comes in. He reads this. And it's another case yeah. about dirty agents <laughs> on a task force that we're over. Fuck. So he comes in. He looks at it. And then he 
is putting together a case. So he goes to Rossini. Keep in mind, at this point, they've now focused in on Rossini. We've got all these people saying Rossini did it. They're all willing to testify. We got like eight guys ready to say Rossini did it in some form or fashion. We're talking about this guy saw blood. This guy did this. This yeah. guy did that. This guy's got a gun. Everybody's saying he did it. Mm -hmm. Pete knows he's screwed. They So bad it becomes a capital case. They actually have a small, like a little trial kind of thing. They go to Washington. Pete's attorneys go to Washington. They have a little trial to decide in front of, I think, Janet Reno. Um to try and fight or try and figure out, can we kill Pete if we find him guilty? Can we execute him? Right. And they say, so they, they Pete's lawyers lose that, and they say, yeah, yeah, if you can prove all this and he gets found guilty, he's going to be executed. So now you're on death row. You're one of the first people on death row. The other people that were on death row at that time, other than Rossini, it's Rossini, it's the Unabomber, <laughs> and it's Timothy McVeigh, the Oklahoma City bomber. Jesus. So Ted Kaczynski, right. yep. Timothy McVeigh. Pete Rossini. Oh my God. Didn't fucking do it. Didn't, didn't, have, didn't, didn't even kill do the anybody. murder. That's fucked. Wow. So, so what uh, What ends up happening is, and keep in mind, he was, all the evidence they explain is that Pete killed him. He shot him with a gun. He didn't shoot anybody with a gun. Yeah. It would be different if you came in and said, I, <clears throat> it was a conspiracy. You're saying, you're telling these people I shot him. Yeah. And he loses. He's going to get executed. So, okay, so he comes back. A uh, number of circumstances. Grow. Okay, so what happens is Mueller at this point, Pete pleads guilty. They go to Pete and they say, listen, he's trying to get him to plead like to a life sentence, you know, first. And then they come back and finally they go back and forth. The lawyers go back and forth with Mueller, back and forth. And what happens is Mueller says, look, here's what we'll do. Now, Pete knows all these motherfuckers are ready to testify against me. Right. I didn't do this. Yeah. So I'm pissed. So that whole code thing, I'm ready to it's cut everybody's window. throat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So Mueller says, listen, here's what I want to do. Mueller knows this dirty FBI agent's involved. But he comes in and says, look, here's what we'll do. We have Pete, we have Rossini plead guilty to 40 years, and I'll allow him to cooperate against these other guys, and we'll get his sentence cut significantly. Mueller says that. Mueller says that to Pete's attorney. Uh-huh. Takes a lot of convincing, but Pete's like, I don't have a, ch I don't have a prayer. My parents come in, they're like, look, what are you gonna do? The guy, you know, what, come on, these guys are guilty or not, you're gonna be found guilty. Yeah. There's no doubt in anybody's mind. It's on mind. you. Yeah. So Pete says, okay, goes to trial. He pleads guilty to two counts of conspiracy to commit murder and the furtherance of a drug conspiracy. So, so it's like a RICO case. Well, he wanted it to be RICO. Okay. But. Mueller was insisting he had to plead guilty to the murders. You have to say you murdered a specific him. murder. Yeah. It can't be conspiracy. It has to be straight up murder. No, it's, well, no, it no, conspiracy, no, conspiracy to, to commit murder. Oh, okay. So you have got to you. say you were. It was a conspiracy. You conspired to commit murder. Okay. So got it. He says, "I'll." Uh, so finally, he says, "Okay." He wants to say Rico, but that no. Mueller saying it has to be for the specific for murder. Keep mm. in mind, he knows if you say it's murder, now it's on your record. It's going to be hard for right. you to unwind to get that off. That. Yeah. So he goes in, and plus his lawyers are saying, definitely you want to do two counts because the maximum they can give you is 20 years apiece. Right. So if they stack them, it's exactly 40 years. You don't want to say Rico because it could be even higher than that. You know. So yeah. they're like, fuck. So he goes in, and Pete says, okay, yeah, did you? Yes, I was paying off an informant. Yes, I was paying off this guy. I was doing this. Did you? Yes, yes. And, and what are you charged char 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 with this? And what do you plead guilty to? Conspiracy to commit murder. Okay, boom, bam, 40 years. He goes to Leavenworth. Goes to Leavenworth. A few months later, Mueller shows up with this guy, Burroughs. Bruce Burroughs, right? Mm -hmm. So he shows up with it, which is the FBI. He's over like the FBI. He's like the top, one of the top dogs of the FBI. He's over the whole task force. These guys are all working for him. He knows them. Mm -hmm. he, they come in. They meet with Rossini. Mueller says, okay, these two guys are going to trial. I need you to, you said you'd testify, and he goes, okay, okay, yeah, I'll testify, I'll testify. He goes, okay, well, let's talk about this. So they sit down, and he says, okay, so when did you, uh, did, did you shoot, the, shoot him? He's like, no, I didn't, I didn't shoot him. So you didn't shoot him. He's like, okay, but you, you told him to shoot him, though, right? I didn't tell anybody to shoot anybody. What do you mean? He goes, you just pled guilty to conspiracy to commit. He's like, I pled guilty because you had like six or eight guys that were going to say I pled guilty. Yeah. Right. It's like, you don't think I'm going to testify to that. Right. So he's like, well, what happened? So he explains what happened. Well, there was this dirty FBI agent. Mueller's been hearing this. Yeah. You've seen 
how many people are saying it. Right. There's a dirty FBI agent. There's this guy, Ferrara, uh, you know, Farcion. Now Pete now knows that the guy is not. He's he, At this point, Pete knows, okay, well, Farcion is not an FBI agent. He's actually a, informant. A, a, an informant, a professional informant. So he says, okay, I got to take this out. That's hurting me. So he says, okay, no problem. So he goes, okay. Uh, he talks to him and he says, okay, so what happened? He said, oh, I was paying him this, paying him that. He's like, what? They're both taking notes. Mueller's taking notes. Burroughs is taking notes. Okay, so what happened? Okay, this, this. He's like, well, when did you do this? When did you do So everything he's telling him, Pete's unraveling his entire case. As Pete <sighs> thinks he's helping to cooperate and tell Mueller what really happened, he's actually destroying Mueller's case. Yeah. Because Mueller had a very simple case. Right these now guys, it's all fucked up. These guys were informants. Pete didn't like that. He was afraid they were going to inform on him. He told these guys to kill him. They both killed him. They got rid of the bodies. It's a pretty simple case. Yeah. It has nothing to do with FBI agents. Yeah. Right. Right. <clears throat> Mueller didn't want it to have anything to do with FBI agents. This guy's on the short list to become attorney general. <laughs> yeah. Okay? And keep, so... He's so he doesn't need this. He doesn't need this shit storm that this would stir up. This is another Whitey Bulger. This is another uh, um, um, shit. Well, I forget the the other guy's name. Anyway, there's like uh, a Supreacher Prong. This is another. This is another Supreacher Prong. Yeah. Right. This is another huge dirty agents. The whole thing blows up and his name's attached to it. He don't want that. I'm, so, I'm here to clean this place up. Yeah. So he says, okay. So they he goes through the whole thing. And he starts explaining the whole thing. This meeting takes place over three days. Mueller actually leaves, goes back, comes back for two more days with Burroughs. They take notes, everything. Okay, he's telling them about dirty FBI agents, telling them about the murder, telling them about how it was ordered, telling them that Mark Farcione is the one who said to do it, yeah. not to do it in San Francisco, do it here. Don't let them find the body. Got the $50,000. Tells them everything. So devastated Mueller's case. Yeah. He then says to Mueller, or Mueller then at the end of it, Mueller says, According to Pete, he shows him Mueller. Uh, one Pete gives him. All, he, he's like, yeah, but these guys haven't talked to you in this long. And whatever. What do you mean? They say they haven't talked to you. Pulls out the fucking records and says, really? Because I talked to him here. I talked to him. Pete has all the fucking phone records. More phone records yeah. of all these phone calls between these guys: Barrero's pager, Farcione's pager. This day, this day. Right. Mueller right after really, the murders. Right after the murders. Way past <laughs> the murders, where these guys say they haven't talked to him in forever. So, goes through the whole thing and then completely unraveled everything. Unravels everything. At some point, Mueller asks, shows him a picture of Arya, and asks him about Arya. And he's like, "That's Arya," and he's like, "Yeah." So he realizes at that point that because now by now he's heard a lot of this, he's now realizing he thinks that Mueller thinks that Arya killed Ellenberg, had Ellenberger killed, and Pete thinks is now now thinks he killed he had him killed because he finds out that Ellenberger's now living with Arya Gen, with Ar, uh, I'm sorry Arya is now living with Ellenberger's ex-girlfriend Jenny. Mm -hmm. So that's an issue. So he's now so Mueller essentially Mueller now knows that the FBI informant probably Bar Bar uh, Barrero also asked Harrison to kill um, to kill Estes, and that Arya may very well have killed. Now, keep in mind, I, I say that because it's less, it's less, it's kind of convoluted because you've got Nason saying multiple things, uh, yeah. Pete saying, I never believed that Arya would have done that, but you've got the documents, $30,000. I don't know. It doesn't look good. You know, I, I, I'm, a hard time saying, you know, you, oh, you killed some, you know, yeah. I don't know. I know that the documents, doesn't look good. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but Mueller, Pete said he definitely, Mueller was like, look, we've had our suspicions for a while. We shows him the phone records, the phone calls from Aria, all these. Why is Aria involved in this whole thing? Right. <clears throat> so that's what happens. So Mueller says, look, I'm bringing you back. I'm going to have you testify in front of the grand jury. We're going to indict these, uh, these dirty FBI agents. Going to get your sentence reduced. And he signs an agreement with Pete. Well, he, he gives Pete an agreement, an ironclad agreement that says he will reduce his sentence. Which never happens. Never happens. To no specific amount, just says he's going to reduce just it. Just says he's going to. Well, you can't tell what the judge is going to. Like, I can't right, tell right. you the judge. I can. Mm. I could. 
tell you I'm going to put in the motion. I'm going to yeah, put it yeah. in front of the judge, but I can't. It's still I don't a judge's know. decision. Judge could do six months. He could do six 20 years. years. Right, we right. don't know. So he's like, I will put it in for sure. They don't do that because what if you get in front of, what if you get in front of a jury? The first thing they're going to say is, will you promise anything? Now right. he's got to say, yeah, yeah, I was promised. <laughs> I was promised he would reduce, have put in a motion to have my sentence reduced. Right. Doesn't that look don't look good. good, yeah. No. Like you're just saying it just to get it reduced. Right. Typically what they say is we will consider it substantial yeah. assistance. And they say, well, I'm hoping this, but they, they said that they weren't promising me anything. No, no, he's got a promise. Yeah. So, okay. So with that said, Mueller goes back with all the notes and they prepare a document called an FBI 302. Okay, then this becomes important. You've read the book. You know why. Because basically they take all these notes and they create a, a, a 302, which is the official document, the official record for the FBI, which is supposed to be a, a, a clarification and, and condensed version of, of an interview. What's important? Mm -hmm. I just told you about dirty def FBI agents, told you about payoffs, told you I did not order the murder of anybody or conspire to murder anybody. Yeah. They craft the 302, doesn't say a fucking thing about <laughs> oh, payoffs, man. doesn't say anything about dirty d FBI agents, doesn't say anything about uh, him denying anything. So with you and you read the 302, it basically talks about drug transactions and talks about a murder, and it makes it sound almost like Pete might have been involved. doesn't say he's like he ordered it, but it's close. It makes yeah. it sound like he's... He's part of it. Part of it. So... What happens is Mueller prepares a document, goes in to see Nason and Harrison, and he convinces them. And, you know, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but it's a whole thing where he comes. He basically goes in and says, look, I got a 302 here and gives him the 302 and tells them all he's going to fucking testify against you. He's going to say that he did order the murders. These guys know he didn't order the murders. Yeah. So now he's flipping it on you. You go to there and start talking about dirty FBI agents ordering murders. Rossini is going to say he ordered the murder. How is that going to look? Like you're lying. Yeah. And that's, you know, so that's what happens. So these guys end up taking a plea. They take a plea for 25 years of peace. Knowing that that's that, that cause they're terrified that Rossini cause who that's Harrison and all those Harrison guys. and Harrison and Nason take a plea for 25 years for each murder. They both get 25 years because Mueller's telling them that Rossini is going to testify against you. And he is going to say Which that Which is he, a straight up lie. Straight up lie. Right, so Mueller's just playing them. Yeah. Yep. You're not allowed and you're and he's prepared a document that basically supports right. it. Right. It's exactly almost the opposite of what Pete said. Yeah. <laughs> so Pete, when these guys plead guilty To what? Oh, to the murder. They, they the plead guilty to committing murders. murder. Keep in mind too, when <clears throat> Nason comes in, Nason says in his thing that that Mueller that he, he was told he had to plead guilty to the murder. And he says, of course, that – oh, and both of them say they put, they plead guilty and they plead guilty that member of a conspiracy and that they'd been ordered to commit the murder by Rossini. So now you've pled guilty. So then how does that look? make Rossini look? Rossini now – now these guys are now saying you did order the murder. Right. Pete's never said he ordered the murders. Yeah. Mueller just planted those seeds. Yeah. Now it points back at you. Now you're done. What are you going to do? Oh, I didn't really because these guys just pled guilty saying that you did order them and they pled guilty to it and got 25 years apiece. They did that because you said that you were going to cooperate and you were going to say it. Truth is, none of it. It's a whole circle jerk. And Fuck. they walk into the whole thing and so they're done. This all comes out later when Fucking Nason, Mueller is just like right. playing it's a puppet a, show. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Damn, that's nasty. So so, they, so Nason later files um you know he files his uh his 2255 where he said he specifically says um that you know well this is his plea where he says he choked him to death too remember so that this is when Mueller realizes too Rossini's the only one who's saying choked to death choked to death yeah he's saying everybody else is shot 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 when he finally gets him to plead guilty and he talks to Nason Nason says I choked him to death why does he decide to say that all of a sudden well because he's pleading guilty anyway he's like I didn't shoot him well how did you kill him well, I mean I killed him but how'd you kill him I, I choked him to death. Oh, shit. He that lines ahead. up with fucking what Rossini right. said. So now Mueller really knows Rossini. Oh, everything Mueller, this guy said that is true. That he was the truth. The, yeah. These FBI agents are dirty. Right. Everything is. And it, he didn't order the murder. Right. So, but they, they plead guilty. They get their 25 years. 
based on Mueller's lie. Based on that, yeah. So I got that document here where he says where Rossini, or sorry, where uh, Nason actually says at at the direction of Rossini, you know, that he killed him. Yeah, at uh, Rossini's direction. So this is um, circumstances. Uh, so he prepares a document where Mueller ends up preparing a document for these other guys to try and he's remember he's trying to convince them while he's trying to convince them he prepares a document that he provides them where he specifically says that a number of circumstances corroborate what Rossini told me there's lots of things that are exactly what he said is true Mm -hmm. so he's admitting in paperwork says Robert Mueller right on it see we got Robert S. Mueller the third right there so he's got that okay where did you get those documents from? Uh, Pete has all these. He the just boxes. had them all? And you, all. you copied all of them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I had a guy in Unicor. Um, it would be expensive to copy these since you don't make any money in prison. So what you do is you get somebody in Unicor, somebody who works in the factory, and you give him commissary, and then he sneaks the documents in his shirt every day. He'll what? bring in like 50 at a time. Keep my wife 750 fucking documents. Yeah. So oh he goes in with God. like 200 documents strapped to him like he's a fucking drug courier. <laughs> and back of pants. Goes in, makes the copies, then puts them in the back, and then he sw- brings them back, and then you give him like a, a, like a, a bag, a $3 bag of coffee. Or Some something. ramen noodles. <laughs> Yeah, so for like so that's how you got off it. for like a hundred dollars worth of copies. That's amazing. I end up getting for like ten bucks. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, it takes some takes some time. Yeah, you have to be creative. Imagine, yeah. Nobody's helping you. Yeah. No help. You are a magician, man. Yeah. It's a story in itself, really. Yeah, these guys are. You know, <laughs> listen. This is another thing. The guy who did it. It's the guy. Another guy. I wrote a fucking story for. No. Him. Yeah, he was the oh. clerk in Unicor. It's a fucking great story. Oh he's a fucking God. young kid. He was like a drug courier and money's fucking moved. To, he's, he's a, it's a great story. You could probably interview him. Where he lives he? in or- or- Orlando. Does he really? Oh, that yeah. would be cool. Yeah. Let's get him in here. Bring smart, him down here. Good yeah. looking kid. Smart, young. He was young as hell when he was doing it. I mean, he moved to, uh, he's a, an American. He, well, he's Mexican, but he looks like an Anglo. But does he have a degree in fine arts? There's no fine arts degree. <laughs> oh, fuck. Doesn't mean that he's not creative. <laughs> he actually moved to Acapulco. I mean, what American, would you move to Acapulco and deal drugs? I'm going to move to Acapulco and no, arrange fucking so. shipments of drugs and all. I mean, this is a kid. This balls. Yeah. Yeah. Ball. I mean, that Jesus. takes a lot. Well, thanks for, thanks to him. We have all these, all this fucking evidence. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Appreciate it, buddy. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. Um, so okay. So Nason wants to get, uh, uh, amendment motion to vacate <clears throat> judgment. So he's trying to, you know, here's where Nason says, like, remember I said how he kind of bamboozled them into pleading guilty. Here's where he says some of claims uh, the government that was Mueller because Mueller was the government at that time. He was the U.S. The government tricked Nason into pleading guilty to the uh, um, intentionally killing killing of uh, John Ellenberger as a result Nason pled guilty but it goes on to here to say where he says co-defendant uh, Rossini would testify he talks about how he says he was going to testify turns out he Nason then goes there and says turns out that was exactly not what he was going to say that Rossini was not going to testify that he had ordered the murder wow okay so this is uh oh yeah yeah uh San Francisco does an about face this is a, an article about San Mueller. Francisco office does about face under tough u.s attorney that's Mueller. what is an about face it means turn around they did a turn he he turned him around because they remember it was all corrupt and fucked up and yeah yeah all, so Mueller turned him around <clears throat> okay and then guess clean what clean the office up clean the office up he got these guys to plead guilty got that fucking guy uh Rossini. he's never getting okay. out oh uh these God. two guys got 24 uh 25 years he completely suppressed anything about Dirty FBI agents, although there wasn't an investigation in the state into the agents. And guess what? Both of uh, all uh, um, Barrero and Blum, the guys who were giving probably Blum, like I said, don't know for sure, but for sure Barrero, the guys that are giving all the all the information out. They both took early stress Hmm. retirement. So they both retired. They retire because Barrero and Blum both Blum. Yeah. Blum. Both of them retired. And the reason they take stress disability retirement is that as an agent, if you retire, you can be called to testify and you can't say, I'm not going to testify. You have to testify as if you take a stress disability retirement, you then can plead the fifth and say, I, I, I'm not going to 
retire. You're Holy no, like, shit. So, I, so if you do get me into a jam, I mean, I'm sorry, not retire. I'm not going to answer. You can right. then say, I'm not going to answer. I think a stress disability retirement. I can't. I'm under stress. I'm fucked up. Because and, that's the weakest link right there. Right. Those so, guys can plead the fifth and they're. Yeah. You can't talk. <clears throat> don't, you can't force me to talk about this. Yeah. <clears throat> so, okay. Mueller doesn't. He gets, Mueller's smart. <laughs> Mueller doesn't end up getting. He doesn't become. Uh, um, he doesn't become the uh, um, attorney general like he was hoping. Right. Bush wins the election. Mueller. Uh, Ashcroft gets named attorney general. He gets like the supporting role to attorney general. And then very within a few months or something like that, he Mueller gets appointed to or nominated to be the FBI director. And I only bring this up because I, I believe that Mueller shifted the blame from the FBI to Rossini, right? I believe he shifted that blame. I believe he covered up I think he didn't start the conspiracy, right? Mueller didn't start no. the conspiracy. The FBI, uh, um, Barrero, Blum, Barrero, and Farchione started the conspiracy. They got the guy murdered. They ended up, um, they ended up starting uh, getting everybody together to frame Rossini. They did that, but Mueller ran with the ball. Yeah. He didn't turn around and do what he said he was going to. do. He didn't indict these guys. He just kept it going because it was in his best. In Why his do you interest. think he really did that though? Do you think it was somebody above him that was pressuring him, or do you think that was all no, in just? I think it was him. I think he's just this personal career. Of course. Yeah, he wanted to look good. Right? I want to look good. And, and how bad is it going to look? How ba- look? I'm going about my job. The moment I start saying dirty FBI agents, geez, it's a fu- people lose their jobs right. left and right. These guys are retiring left and right. All these guys that were involved in in Bulger's case and in yeah, Salimi and, 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 and all of these cases, it doesn't look good. These guys are immediately so even, it's going to be a domino effect, right? Yeah, yeah okay. Cannot be involved in that. I'm about to be named Attorney General. Right. Turns so out he he's wrapped FBI it up director. and didn't have to say anything. I got to wrap it up. Agents. These guys got 25 years. They did commit the murder. They got 25 years. This guy Rossini, they're going to reduce his sentence. Who knows by how much? You know. So he's kind. Of, you know, I'm sure he justified it very he justified easily. It, yeah, these yeah, are yeah. bad guys. Yeah, they're drug dealers. Fuck them. They're not a U.S. attorney. Right. Uh, this is a top shelf guy. Mm-hmm. So here's what he does. At his nomination, the nomination of Robert Mueller, I just love this quote. I just have to read this quote. Yeah, read it, read okay. it for us. This is a quote. One of the, uh, one of the uh, senators says, uh, do you believe there is a, cultural, uh, a culture problem within the bureau, the you know, federal bureau? He says, I think it is. And, and that, so they're talking about all of these problems the bureau has. So Mueller's answer is, I think it is absolutely unacceptable to try to cover up and not disclose something that needs to be disclosed. And more importantly, or as importantly, it's unacceptable to try to shift blame to someone else. <laughs> wow. Which is exactly what exactly he just did. Exactly what you just fucking did. <laughs> right. And when he when he puts his kind of like their, his resume, like all the things I've done, his last case— this one. one of his only homicide cases he's ever worked on, and a death penalty case, probably the only death penalty case he worked on. He he uses Rossini's case. He says I handled with others the prosecution of three individuals for the killing of two persons whom they believed were cooperating with the federal narcotics investigation. So he actually uses Pete's case as part of his resume. Part of his resume. And <laughs> where is this resume? Sick. It's uh, it's one of the things you submit to the committee. I could listen. There's, there's like 150 pages of his. Okay. He was taught. You know, he was he was uh, nominated unanimous. Everybody loves Mueller. Yeah. So Holy Pete's shit. not a big fan. No, I'm sure. Pete's not a big fan. <laughs> He's pretty pissed off right about now. Pete's upset. You know, and and in general, honestly, the only thing that bothers me because if you look at Mueller's resume. Look, these guys all have problems. He's been involved in a couple of skirmishes before. There's some, some. He's got mud on his face. There's a BCCI <clears throat> investigation. There was this big bank that went under. He never really did the investigation because he knew that the CIA it was laundering money and that he, he knew some stuff was going on. So he never really follows it through. Mm-hmm. Th- th- that's a bad thing. It's, there's there's a couple little things, but he, he he's always willing to take a hit for the government. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Keep in mind, this and is they the guy. Like that. They love that. Yeah. That's what gets you. Beca- that's how you become FBI director. So one of the things he did, you know, first of all, and started young. He, this guy, th- he did. He 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 volunteered for for Vietnam. Fucking thousands of kids every month are coming home in body bags. This guy graduates high school and volunteers, and he knew. Pers- he was in the Marine Corps, right? He was he was a, a, a was he Marine? A, a, when I read on Wikipedia, it said that he was yeah, like a an was. officer in the Marine Corps. I think he was in the Marines. Um, so. 
look, I, I'm saying I'm not volunteering. Yeah, right. no shit. The fuck, I'm the, <laughs> he, he had one of his good friends fucking came home in a body bag. You know, look, look. I think he fucked up. I think he's ambitious. I think he justified it. I think he made some mistakes. I think everybody makes mistakes. I don't have a problem fucking up. Mm -hmm. I fuck up all the time. I deal with fuck ups all the time. I love guys that fuck up. I love complete idiots who fuck up. But what bothers me is when you can't fucking own up to it. Mm -hmm. The first thing you do when I get caught doing something, I do stupid shit all the time. Don't keep denying it. Just go, fuck, all right, I fucked up. Here's what I did. Boom, boom, boom. Sorry, my bad. I apologize. I can make it right. I can fix it. Let's fix this. But don't keep denying. That's what irritates me, and that's what he does. He just keeps covering it up. Why wouldn't you cut this fucking guy loose? Right. You've got your fucking director of the FBI. You could stroke a pin and they'd cut him loose. Right. But wouldn't that just unravel a whole slew of other shit? Yeah, he's worried problems. about him coming out and saying a bunch of shit. Maybe, but you, you have to see the 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 look. Let, let's let me keep going. If he lets him out, like there's, if, I feel like Mueller has so much to lose. Well, and keep in mind too, with Pete being in prison, keep in mind I can't, you can't necessarily talk to a reporter. Like I had carte blanche to do what I wanted in there because I wasn't doing it. I was, I was writing ice stories and everybody thought it was cute and funny. Yeah. Look yeah. at little Cox running around. Yeah. He's little, Matt nice, Cox. little Matt Cox. And <laughs> he's writing his little stories. Writing good books. They don't, you know, they're yeah. harmless. He's not bothering anybody. I wasn't out there trying to solve murders and right. stuff. Right, right, I mean, right. stuff fell in my lap. Yeah. But it wasn't like I was causing any trouble and I was keeping everybody entertained and they're yeah. all happy, you <laughs> right. know? But if Pete said, I want to talk to 2020 and 2020 showed up, they have to go through the, the um, public information officer. Mm. People get notified. So you can keep an eye on this guy while he's in prison. You can shut him down while he's in prison. You have to allow him to do anything while he's in prison. You're not just, there's no internet. You're going, everything's being filtered in and out, in and out. You're not getting away with shit. So he's got him. He's got him in a box, mm. you know. So it's a nice place to have somebody who's got some dirt on you. Uh, promised. Okay, this is one of the things I love. So after Mueller disappears, right? They assign a new guy. They assume this guy, David Hall. So David Hall. So Rossini puts in a motion immediately, saying, "Hey, it's been fucking months and months and months. Mueller's a goddamn." He's just turned right. FBI. Nobody's the, talking the to me. What's going on? He puts in a motion to compel them to reduce his sentence. Why? Well, I'm done. So he says, so they, they respond by saying, uh, so Hall's response to Rossini's, hey, I have an agreement with these guys. Of course, there's nothing in the file. And what right. he's saying is I have a guaranteed agreement. So Hall looked at that and said, we don't give guaranteed agreements. Right. Huh, so he's lying. He writes, he even puts, at no time was the defendant promised any deal or redu reduced sentence by the government officials interviewing him. Oh, he's got to be so pissed off when he reads But that. he's got proof. He has his copy right. of the agreement. So yeah. Pete fucking's like, what the fuck? Oh, that's, oh, hell no. Yeah. So he, he, doesn't, he doesn't even file it, nothing. He mails it straight to the judge. So he mails it straight to the judge. The judge who just read that gets this from Mueller stating that uh, uh, the government, this is after you agree to cooperate, you know, uh, the government in turn agrees to file a motion under Rule 35 for a uh, federal rule of uh, criminal procedure setting forth the ex extent uh, and significance of your cooperation. Such a motion will be filed at the conclusion of your cooperation. He's done. He's done. Um, you understand that the government's motion uh, will set forth extended. Uh, so it, it goes on. And so it's a guarantee. Yeah. A guarantee. He doesn't say substantial, you know, will consider. No, no. So he sends this to the judge and the judge is like, oh, hell no. Bring him back. So he bring him back. Pete goes in front of the judge. Everybody goes in front of the judge. Then Mr. Hall gets up there and says, uh, he gets in front of the judge and they say, and the judge says, um, I said I wouldn't read all this stuff. So she <laughs> says, are you denying? Because it's Exhibit B. That's what this is. Yeah, yeah. She goes, are you denying that this that there's uh, that there's an agreement? And he says, uh, no, you're not, Your Honor. You know, not at this time. I'm not agreeing. I'm not denying it now. You know. Yeah. Uh, but then he says, but he says he doesn't de deserve anything because he pled guilty to consp conspiring to commit murder. But then when he went in front of Mueller, he denied it. So he's saying he denied it to Mueller. So we don't have to agree because he denied it. 
pled guilty to doing it, and now he's he's so he's lying. One of those two things he's lying. So mm-hmm. he's admitting that Rossini told Mueller he didn't commit the murders. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, uh, now. They immediately turn around and they start saying, Rusini starts requesting documents. Like, I want all the fucking notes. I want the 302. I want everything. So they come back and Wilson Leone, which is a, another one. Keep in mind, they, these guys got five attorneys working on his shit. Yeah. He's got like him. Yeah. And like maybe his parents like leverage their house and get him one attorney. So how are you fight? How are you doing that? How are you fighting that? Okay. So um, is Amadeo helping him at all or no? No, Amadeo isn't around then. Okay. This is. This, this is, is way... back in 2000 and okay. like, this is 2010. Okay. So he ends up, they come back and they say, they come back and they say, yeah, we don't have any file. We don't have any records. We don't have any notes. All the notes were purged. And this is, that's what it says here. It says, uh, uh, basically this guy's, it's a declaration saying that uh, had no other documents or re- records related to the case, that they have everything. That's it. This is, this is a declaration Okay, this is this is them telling the government or the, the court, hey, there's nothing else, nothing else to give them. Fuck them. That's it. Okay, fine. So then there's a then they go. So then Bruce Burroughs, remember Burroughs, yep. who went and took the notes, the guy who yeah. actually was taking the notes. Right. Yeah. Burroughs comes and and so they investigate. Have Burroughs come back? So he comes back, and this is just to clarify. The, these notes are are when Burroughs and Mueller went to the penitentiary for three days to meet with Rossini. Yes. Right. Right. Now, Mueller's notes, we never find. They're gone. Mueller's pretty sharp. Sure. I mean, we don't keep <laughs> around evidence that can... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, so, this... So, keep in mind, so... Um, they talk to Burroughs. This is, this is his transcript, right? So, Burroughs, uh, Bruce Burroughs gets on the thing. They say... Uh, uh, records be clear this is in reference to the the three uh the three meetings with mr uh, muller blah 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 uh he was uh, and then they they asked basically was he in, did, did corruption uh, at all uh come up with rossini he says no so did he ever mention anything about corruption no <laughs> never say anything about corruption. no corruption no corruption. Did he ever? Did he ever disclaim? Uh, disclaim any? Uh, expressly disclaim any involvement in Ellenberger's murder? No. Did he ever expressly uh, disclaim involvement in um, you know in Estes' murder? No. Okay. So did he ever in any way disclaim there was a concocted conspiracy to frame him? No. Never. Who, who's him. saying this? This no. is Burroughs is Burroughs. saying he took all these notes and yeah. he's saying. He never mentioned a conspiracy. No. Pete's like, the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? Um, were you able able to confirm allegations of corruption? No. You know why? Because they never looked into it. Yeah. So if I say this guy's corrupt and I got five people that will say they were there when he brought the, the money, you got to go talk to them. You can check the records from the hotel. You can check everything. If you're Mueller, you don't follow that up. Right, you don't want to. Up? I and there's a paper you, trail. I got my murderers. Mm-hmm. I, I, everything. Right, I'm not case following leads that point to the FBI coming, yeah. being involved. I can't follow that. Oh no, I, we don't even look into that. Right. Um. So they start talking about the. So this is Pete's lawyer starts talking about the 302 that was created and how it's not quite accurate and is it exact and well how did you create it because you know I'm not sure my my client says it's not accurate. And he says, yeah, I did. He said, did you take notes? He goes, yeah, I took notes. I do. Oh, do you have, do you know where the notes are? He's like, did Mueller take notes? I don't know if Mueller took notes. Okay, so you did take, yeah, yeah, I believe, I believe I did. Okay, do you have the notes? I do not. Uh, where are they now? They should be in the file. Which file? The FBI file. Your Honor, if there are notes, so this guy, Vermullen, which is Pete, uh, Rossini's lawyer, says, whoa, Your Honor, if there's notes in the file, we need to see those notes. Yeah. We've asked for the notes. Oh, okay, so guess what? They go, and they look in the FBI file, and they're the fucking notes. They find the notes Jesus. that they've already swore were not there. Yeah. yeah. Not there, been purged, there's no records, there's no... F- Bam, here's your fucking notes. <laughs> this is, this is, sorry, this is funny. This is the <laughs> U.S. attorney saying, this is after they find the notes. Pete said when he brought the notes in and laid them down, and they started going over the notes. And I was like, well, what'd he say? He goes... Pete goes, you know what's funny about that? I write this in the, in the book where he says, 
He says, you know, the funny thing is, he goes, he'd done everything he was supposed to do. Like he filed the right motions. He'd said all the right things. He'd done all the right things. He goes, but when he saw the notes, it was the first time I could tell he believed me. Yeah. He was a good attorney. He was, but he was going through the motions. This, when he looked at the notes, he was like, fuck. Yeah. He couldn't believe it. Yeah. Right. Because, you know, you assume that the guy's lying to you. Right. Mm -hmm. So anyway, this is uh, uh, one of the U.S. attorneys telling the judge, uh, our files, our internal files were purged years ago. There's nothing else. <laughs> so that's why they can't find. Uh, so the 302 is not synonymous with the notes. It's, a, it's vastly different. Right. And he says. Uh, so they left out all the corruption and they all that stuff. Leave out everything. everything. So what ends up happening is she says, OK, we're going to let you talk to Mueller. We're going to bring Mueller back. So he goes, OK. So he, they, they go, we're going to let you talk to Mueller. They say that to Rossini. No, no, yeah, they say it to his lawyer and Rossini. Right. They say we're going to let you. We're going to let you basically <clears throat> interview Mueller as a witness. <laughs> wow! So you can go over this. Yeah. But we're limiting it to two hours. <laughs> okay. Remember the hotel. This is called the Mon Monterey or Mondre Montreal Hotel yeah, right yeah. here. So it talks about the Montreal Hotel. That's where they deliver the first fifty thousand. Which is it talks about how Frank, uh, some, somebody was uh, they stayed in Rossini's room. So he deposited fifty thousand. He gave fifty thousand dollars down, and that he still owed another another fifty thousand dollars right here. Right. So this is how they talk about. He talks about just them going up to the room, and there's fifty thousand and fifty thousand, and right. it's Mark Farcione. <clears throat> so where does he say? He says, uh, "Make sure they don't find the body." And here it says that they said says not to kill him in San Francisco. Okay. So and what is that from? This is from the notes. This is Burroughs' notes. Okay, this is Burroughs' notes when, when, they're talking when Pete's to talking to him. Right. Now, keep in mind, he's got a bunch of notes, but these are the ones that he leaves out all these things. He leaves yeah, these yeah, out yeah. of the 302. The 302. Right. So he never mentions yeah. anything about corruption, $50,000 payoff, right, or, right, or right, anything, okay. the hotel, nothing. Keep in mind, too, multiple people are there. All he's got to do is go talk to these people. People right. were there. Mueller doesn't go. No, not interested in talking to them. Can't have. Yeah. We can't be generating. Right. Can't be generating. These notes are notes. here. These notes are here, so it's done. They got them. They got them dead to rights, pretty much. Well, do they? Because you would think. You would think. Declaration of defendant. Rossini submits. So Rossini here explains how what he told Mueller in this whole thing. He explains all this about what he told Mueller and what the notes say and everything, and they send it. So why did they did they, did they ask him why they left these notes out of the three hundred two? Did they ask him that? Did they ask that to Mueller? Well, or to Burroughs. Um, I mean, surely no, they well, get the yeah, notes. Well, yeah, they what's do, his they attorney? Say, oh, yeah. Well, oh, see, they're going to interview Mueller. Burroughs had already been interviewed. Yeah. So now it's Mueller. Now they come up with the notes. Then they go straight for Mueller. Okay. Yeah. So Mueller, they ask. So Mueller gets on the, when Mueller takes the stand, keep in mind, too, this is on a video thing. He's in Quantico yeah. video or conference, wherever, yeah, like yeah. Washington someplace. Yeah. I don't know. Um, so <laughs> he ends up taking it. He's on a screen and everything. They talk to him. He's only, only got two hours. So they go through the whole thing, and you can read this. This is all on the uh, on the website. And this is like right after nine eleven, right? Uh, it's no, it's a while out. This is a while later. Like this happens in ten, about ten years. This is two thousand eleven now. By oh, the time they get him on the stand, okay. Keep in mind, Mueller's been constantly putting this off. Yeah, you know, I have um, meetings with the right. White House. Right, right, right. So finally, they say we'll do a conference. We'll, they do a conference. It's only going to be two hours. So, okay, they ask basically. Yeah, let's let's try to summarize that okay summarize the whole thing is that they start asking him questions did they talk about this did they talk about this so this is the one that i love so he's expecting him to say you know he's he's like he's like I, i'm expecting him to say that i just what happened yeah just say what you talk right. about come clean he has no did, choice did mr rossini ever flat out deny he was involved in the murder of ellenberger or Estes or or um estes did he ever deny it no to the contrary he implicated himself substantially in both of those murders. Just, what about the notes? Right. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Does Mueller, a, does oh, yeah, Mueller I, not know Mueller that they says Mueller doesn't know they found the notes. Oh, okay. Oh, okay, okay. okay. That's what I'm saying right here because they ask yeah. him, did you review this? No. Did right. you review this? No. We sent you this. Did you review? No, no. Did you? He's like, all I looked at was the 302. Yeah. Because mm. he knows because he helped, probably helped craft the 302. Right. right. Of course. Of course, yeah. So then they start going through and if you read it on the thing and I, I you know, in the book, and if you read it on the website, which I mean, I know we're trying to wrap up. Mm -hmm. So he ends up saying, 
um, he says, oh, Rossini downplayed his role substantially. He did this. He did that. He Then they start saying – so he it starts to become obvious as they're asking the questions about corruption and were you involved in this? Were you looking at this? Were you looking at this? He starts to realize something's – you know, you start to realize something's up. Yeah. It's got to know something. So it's like uh, – he, then he starts immediately saying when they start asking about corruption, law enforcement, investigation. Did you look into this? Did you did you know who this person was? Did you know who this person was? So they start asking about Harrison and Nason, right, and Rossini preparing to test preparing him to testify. They start asking about all these different things, and one of the things they start asking is about the uh, about. He's like they're like, why would you go see him? Well, we wanted to make sure that we were going to prosecute the right person right well, you, you didn't right so so what he told you was completely contradictory to that so he says uh did you review all the all of the notes he's like no well how about the law enforcement reports uh did you review those law enforcement reports i reviewed the 302 uh did you talk to agent burrows or anyone uh, under this he says not that i recall you know i so said you haven't talked to anybody right he's in washington these guys aren't called. You can't call the FBI director. It doesn't matter who the fuck you are. Yeah. Unless you're the president. The, and nobody thinks he's, anything's wrong. A lot of these guys are just going about their normal day. Right, right. So they don't realize this guy's going to get on the stand and say all this fucked up shit. So uh, when you went to talk to Rossini, uh, you know, uh, do you recall, you know, Farcione, Barrera, or Blum, and, uh, and about the investigation? He says, uh, I'm not certain. See what I'm saying? Now he's mm-hmm. starting, I'm not certain. It's been too long. I can't remember. Can't recall. He starts doing all that shit. I can't recall. I can't recall. Uh, what about Farcione? What about this, the case? Not that I'm I'm not saying, you know. So he starts fumbling and fumbling and fumbling. My favorite part is when he starts to kind of get him into a jam. He says, I don't recall like yeah. oh, he says times. it hundred I don't recall. At this present time, I do yeah. not recall what I was thinking or in my mind at the yeah. time. He's like, do you remember reading this where they were saying it was about corruption? <clears throat> they were talking about, a, they were focusing in on corruption and this and this. He says, they said, uh, do you recall at this point having read that or not? He said, I don't recall, but I can tell you I adamantly agree, uh, disagree. Mueller basically you know, snaps, you know, a police officer did not pull the trigger or kill. And he cuts him off. He's like, I'm not, I'm not saying he did. He pulls out the handwritten notes and they start going over the handwritten notes. Who starts pulling the lawyer, the lawyer. Yeah. Rossini's lawyer. Rossini's lawyer. Yeah, yeah. And he starts to show him the notes, shows him to Mueller. And and then he just fucking turns into, listen, I don't remember nothing. I don't remember. (laughs) I don't know. I I plead the fifth. (laughs) Did you discuss this? You know, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, I could have. Then it becomes I could have. I don't have. Uh, I don't recall today. If it's in Bruce's three hundred two, we did. Right. He keeps going back to the three hundred two because that looks good. Because right. he knows. Well, of course he he's safe it. there. Yep. If, right. if they crafted he's it, the, and we know the three hundred two yeah, is that's safe. My safe right. place. Yep. It's perfect. Right. That's all I read. Yep. <laughs> so he starts talking about testimony. He said, "You, if you read the whole thing, everything that Rossini said was correct." And he's he's really really trying to back out of the whole thing, and so it just becomes a whole bunch of I don't recall, I don't know. Well, what about this note? What about this? He's like, I don't know what was in Bruce's mind when he wrote that. I don't recall. Uh, what did you do after Rossini told you all this? Did you launch any investigation at all? You went to Leavenworth, and the guy just told you that the FBI officer is the one that basically you know officer or you know, agent whatever yeah they conspired to help commit this murder or that they leaked the information they could did you look into that at all and he's like well we may have it's possible we could have I mean, because he knows it doesn't look good if i didn't follow that up yeah well we already know burrow said in his transcript we didn't look into any of that because uh-huh. he's saying that didn't even happen he's saying now we know it happened did right. you look into it mm. and he's like well we could have maybe possibly there may have been a separate investigation no no we're talking about this investigation I don't recall. I don't know. It's probably yeah. it's very probable it occurred. So they go on and on. I mean, it, it just bro, it just it goes on and on. And it, in the end, he Jesus. just it reverts to him just saying, "I don't recall. I don't recall. Right. I don't know. I don't recall. I don't recall." And it, yeah. and if you read the whole thing, and I know we can't read the whole thing. I know it's it's ridiculous. It's it's you know it ain't good. Yeah. It, no. And this is this is a condensed version. Keep in mind, this is 136 pages, almost all Mueller saying. 
I don't, I don't remember, recall. Huh? I don't recall. Unless you say something bad about an FBI agent, and then he says, that is absolutely snaps. untrue. Yeah. You know. Meanwhile, there's notes from his meeting with Pete that basically say, basically contradict everything that he's saying. Everything he's saying, we've got, they've got notes that say, yeah, exactly. There were, there were, there were payoffs. There was murders. Farcion saying we're not to murder him here. Make sure they don't find the body. Every, right. Didn't even look 50 into grand it. Grand here. Doesn't even look into there. it. This is where. So after the two hours is up, then what happened? Like what happens after after they right. after this proceeding is over? They run out of time. They get they got they gave two hours with Mueller. Right. Mueller basically wasted two hours saying I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Right. So where do they go from there? Well, he ends up getting resentenced. It, basically, they go to Pete and they go through the whole thing. Okay. They end up saying, they end up. He gets resentenced. Uh, the judge knocks it down to like he goes from like forty years to like thirty six to thirty five years. So it's like so forty to five off, knock five off, Fuck. It's nothing. So he Pete appeals it. He gets again, he, again. <laughs> he appeals it. They say the appellate court says you're. We're gonna let you talk to this guy. We're gonna let you bring Mueller back, untimed. As oh, long as it shit. takes, so that's one. Of, that's one of the things they win. Like you can't limit them. Yeah. So his attorney basically, his new attorney is like, look, they they calls up, they call up the uh, Wilson Leone. What is this like his third attorney? Yeah, yeah. So they call up, they call up the U.S. attorney, and they say, look, we're bringing Mueller back. He goes, we're gonna keep him on the fucking stand a couple of days now. Really <laughs> dig yeah, in hard. Yeah, so yeah. the guy's like, all right, listen, calm down. Let's let's work this out. Let's work this out. So they end up, they end up. Eventually, they end up um, realizing that this is it. We're done. We, they're going to bring Mueller back. They've got the notes. So the U.S. attorney comes back, and Pete said he was really irritated because he's like, I really wanted Mueller to get back on the stand. But they, they basically they file a stipulation. The government concedes that what Mueller said was inaccurate. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they don't say lie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He materially <clears throat> misrepresented the yeah. facts of the case, you know, that kind of bullshit. So basically that what he said was was uh, inconsistent with the notes, mm -hmm. was inconsistent with what actually happened. Uh, and it talks about – so they concede a whole bunch of stuff, and they agree that everything that Pete said that he denied, he denied it. He denied that he had done all that uh, – uh, that he – conspired to do any of anything to kill anybody that he talked about they they basically concede to everything that actually happened they bring pete back again and put him in front of the court again they once again the u.s attorneys come in they basically miss they basically misrepresent what actually happened and they try and confuse the issues and they say it's all pete's fault because he was a leader organizer blah 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 it's all him it's all him and he gets sentenced again i think this time it drops to 34 years they, give him 34 <laughs> they knock years? a year off i think they give him 34 years or something like that. i think he finally ends up with 34 years they've resentenced him like three so times. currently at this date yeah he's 34, 34 years. years so what is russini's like what is his state of mind right now like what is after all this all these years of going through all this bullshit like where is he at if you were to talk to him right now like um what's his position know, on it like right now how does he guy. feel about it how does he feel you know what he feels like he's you know what he's most upset about is that at one point at one point when he was being resentenced, the government brings back, not the last, I don't think it was the last resentencing. I think it was, no, I do. I think it was the last resentencing. They bring in all of the family members. Like the. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they bring them all in and they, they let oh, them. Ellenberger. Read. Yeah, Ellenberger's family. The other and guy. Um, uh, Estes, Estes family, family come in. His sister comes in. His brother, everybody comes in. They all get to be in there. And well, pr just prior to being resentenced, the U.S. attorney actually said to Pete's attorney, hey, by the way, the it was either the Ellenberger family or the Estes family. Want, the families basically wanted to talk to your client. I told them that you, you wouldn't agree to it. And it's just, his lawyer says, no, absolutely not. No, he didn't want to talk to them. And that's it. So then they, he tells, oh, yeah, by the way, you can believe this. He, goes, he tells Pete, by the way, he goes, can you believe uh, that they, they wanted to talk to you? Uh, you know, the Estes or whoever wanted to talk to you. Pete's right. And, like, yeah. and Pete goes, yeah, what? I want to talk to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, well, what? What do you mean? He goes, I want to talk to him. He's like, why? He said, because I want to explain to him what happened. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? Right, it's they like, think he killed him. Right. He he's like, I want to explain that you know, like he he loved John. Right. You know? They were the best friends. Was, yeah, they were best friends. I mean, the guy was a fuck up. Mm-hmm. But you know, but he's like, but we'd been friends forever. Yeah. He's like, and. You know, he's like, I used to stay over at his you know, house all the time. We would eat. I knew yeah. his family. I knew he was just stay at our place all the time. My mom would cook him fucking spaghetti. He's yeah. like, I mean, we were friends. Yeah. And now he's like, his his family thinks I fucking killed him. Mm-hmm. I would like them to look me in the face so I could tell them that I didn't do this. Yeah. So then his attorney goes back and talks to the U.S. attorney and tries to get the U.S. attorney to contact them. And he's like, no, no, forget it. Don't worry about it. I talked to him. They don't want to stay. I talked to him. They don't want to talk to him anymore. I told him that he didn't want to, so now that they're done. And so Pete's like, he's like, I would love to tell them that I didn't do this, that this didn't happen. He's like, I mean, you know, it's, I don't want to do the next five or six years, you know, that he's got at this point. Mm -hmm. He's like, I don't want to do that. But at this point, you've been locked up so fucking long. Yeah, right. Might as well ride it out now. Yeah, well, you know, and you don't, you want, you would, the last five, six, seven years is not nearly as fucking hard as the first part. Mm-hmm. Once you hit, hit that, once you get over that that hill, you know, once you're over the hump, it's it's a huge weight off of you. And he's coming down just at the end. I mean, he's yeah. practically walking around thinking, he, he's like, feeling like, I'm, I'm getting out soon. Yeah. It's five years. Right. He's got five years left. Yeah, and right. you're thinking, and that, but that's how you feel. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. fucking I'm getting out of here soon. Right. Soon, it's five, five years. years. Most people get five years, they want to kill themselves. Yeah. Saying, five years is nothing. After twenty, it's not. Oh right. So, have you talked to him recently? Um, I was talking to him up until the point when my probation officer told me I couldn't talk to him anymore. Okay. So, not allowed to talk to. Yeah. You know, I didn't think it was an issue because we were working on a book together. Yeah. On doing the true crime thing, and and you know, but she's uh, I don't know. She's uh, she's opposed to it. So she's not I, your biggest fan. No, no. And she doesn't you know, like the not, books. <laughs> she, keep, she keeps telling me she's rooting for me. But I haven't seen it. Uh so yeah, so no, I haven't I haven't uh Well, if she's watching this, I'm sure she's a I'm sure she's a very nice lady. She yeah, yeah she, she is, is she's very polite. She's yeah. very nice. She's very I think I'm just she's just no. she can see that you're cons- trying to uh you I think know she's concerned about me. I stole yeah. uh, eleven and a half million the last time I was on <laughs> Yeah, right. They tend to get upset about yeah. that. Um, so yeah, so, uh, but you know, here, here's the thing is that it's like this guy, this guy's in prison for something that he, look, like I said, I, I mean, I don't know if I said this, I don't think we we're on camera or not, but, but you know, the two guys that committed the murders ate Thanksgiving with their families. Yeah. Right. Pete had a holiday meal in the fucking chow hall. Right. right. His mother came to see him. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, your mother drives an hour and a half, two hours to come see you. It's mm-hmm. bullshit. Yeah, it's um, and, they, and all them guys know it, that he right, didn't do it. Right, and, and here's the thing. And, and so the people that actually, the FBI agents and the informant and the people that actually, that actually, you know, concocted committed the, the, whole concocted story. the whole murder yeah. and the frame up, these guys are, these guys are at home with their families. Yeah. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense. And you know, and Mueller getting on the stand and saying some bullshit. You know, if you read the book, I you know it clarify it really well. Where he's just complete. It's just bullshit. He didn't know the notes existed. He's ready to fucking bury Rossini. He could have cut him fucking loose. He could have said this man did an amazing job. You need to cut it. He could have right then said he you got to cut his sentence. It's a great. He really helped us. He this. He that. I mean, he could have pushed it. Instead, he did the opposite. Mm-hmm. Keep him in fucking prison. He didn't kill anybody. Jesus. Yeah. Even if he did what you <clears throat> said he did, you gave him 40 years. Yeah. The guy's like, the killers are already out. Yeah. So, you know, as far as Arya's concerned, there's some evidence there that definitely that points to Arya. Or maybe Nason just accidentally, like he said at one point, he accidentally did. Was he a hitman? Did he accidentally kill? I don't know. Now, where's Nason yeah. and Harrison now? They're both, uh, they're they're both out. out. Now, they're right. out. They got out like last year or the year before. Okay. Both of them. So... I just, uh, you know, and what's so fucked up is that, is that like, like I told you, I, I sent this all over the place. Like Fox News looked at it. The investigator for Fox News really looked at it for about a month or so. I mean, I'm sorry, for a week or so. And then he contacted me on the phone and then we talked on the phone and I was trying to explain it. And he, I could tell he didn't understand. He wasn't asking the right questions. Okay. And his issue in the end was 
he was asking questions that were like, okay, well, you know, well, yeah, but we can't prove the phone numbers or this. Yes, we can. I have the directory that says mm-hmm. it was this. Right. I have the I, I have the the homicide detectives wrote down the phone number for Barrero. Right. And Farshion. He got the, those are the right numbers. I assure you. I have you know, well, and then he switched to something else. And then he switched to something else. Well, well, well I'm not sure that that's really Mueller's really committed a crime. I don't didn't say I don't know that he's committed a crime. I'm not sure what you would call framing someone or allowing a, a allowing it to continue but you know what i do know i know that it's ethically and morally wrong is that at the very least i think that people should know that this is what really happened and that he should have done the right thing yeah he still could do the right thing you know that he could have fixed it he didn't he's continuing to allow this to to move forward and have this guy serve out a sentence that he never should have been involved in keep in mind the guys that were involved in his drug conspiracy these guys got a year yeah they got five years one guy who just gotten out of federal prison like four or five years earlier who'd been in federal prison a couple of times and the state massive amount of drugs because he was willing to cooperate he got like eight like like eight or nine years ended up getting out in like seven years six years i mean all of these guys got minor minor sentences that Pete should have ended up getting. Yeah. He Even got if, the big one. Right. 40 years. Let's keep him in jail. Why? You can see that it's it, 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 was, it was a complete frame job. Everybody's admitting that. Right. So, you know, my problem is, one, Pete's in prison. Two, nobody gives a fuck. Uh, I sent it to uh, um, you know, Fox News. They looked in it. And, and in the end, what Fox News is, I think what it boiled down to was that basically the guy said, look, the problem is, he said, I don't know about all these documents. He said some of them are, a lot of them are sealed. Mm -hmm. Pete's got them. I have them. But the fact of the matter is he doesn't like the idea that I was involved. So. You personally. Me personally. Right. Because you got to pass in a record. Exactly. Secondly, he said we cannot. He goes, I, 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 we cannot move forward with something like this. He goes, because it's such, it's such a big allegation. It's such a bombshell that we can't get it wrong. So what you did was you read the book, you looked through some documents, and that's all he did. He called, uh, I think he called Vermellon, which was uh, the Ver- lawyer. Vermellon, which was the lawyer, to ask <clears throat> Vermellon. Vermellon wouldn't, re- uh, wouldn't respond to him. You know, I mean, you're not going to talk about your client's case. Right. Um, nor do I think that, keep in mind, he probably doesn't want to talk to him anyway because if it has anything to do with the Mueller. Now, right. what this stuff getting out like say fox news did run this or or a big network like cnn or whatever ran a story like this what would happen what what would happen to Mueller? nothing would happen nothing to him. would happen to him right what, but what what it would show is that look he didn't follow up the leads what you what you do if you lay out all, if you lay out a whole bunch of information and you just stick with what your what further is your agenda you're going to come up with a file full of 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 facts and documents that prove whatever you want proven you can you ignore the other ones Mm -hmm. so you can easily shape any investigation right and that's what he did was he he shifted blame he shaped the investigation he stuck it on this guy to avoid any uh any involvement of the fbi yeah to to further his agenda Mm -hmm. you know and and that's what it boils down to and so this guy so pete rossini has to sit in prison and the problem is this is one example of shit that happens right. probably oh, yeah, yeah. every day in oh, the yeah. FBI and in the U.S. prison yeah, system. Look, like look, there's so many people. He's just one one guy out of well, a million. Yeah, I mean, I, I hate I hate to say that because it's like, look, listen, if you're in prison, there's a, about a 99.99% chance you were supposed, you're supposed to be in prison. Right. I've met very few people that were innocent. He's not innocent. Pete's right. not innocent. Pete's a drug dealer. He shouldn't right. have got 40 years. He should have got 10 years. Right. And Maybe he helped, he helped his, 20. He helped uh, throw the body away in the dumpster, yeah. right? right? He disposed of, <laughs> disposed he did of the body. He dispos- sure. d- dispose of the body. And that's a horrible thing. You that's know, prison time. Yeah. Definitely prison time. But okay, he served fine. in a sentence fine. for fine. A Give him 20 years. didn't commit. Cut the fucking guy loose. Right. You know, here's the, the problem is, is that the podcast, like people will watch this and they'll try and pull their, they're very polarized. They're Democrats or Republicans. Oh, and yeah. To me, it's not a Democrat. It's not a Republican. What thing. is it's Mueller? Just, is he a Republican? He's actually a Republican, uh, but Democrats and Republicans just love him. Everybody loves him. Okay. So what why? I was, Do you know why? No idea why. Hmm. 
I think it's just because he's all around a, a government guy. Yeah. He's got great credentials. Yeah. He's got um, the good resume. Hey, yes. Good. Marine Corps. Marine, Marine Corps, 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 Corps officer. Yeah. You can't say anything bad for about like that. Right. That's you why know, they don't I want can. to run it on He's the He's a news. patriot. Yeah, he. I can say bad things like yeah. that because you, smearing my – I remember it's funny. Yeah. I actually called a guy, a reporter, and told him about this. Do you, let me tell you the, the conversation real quick. conversation was I told him the whole thing and all the evidence that I had, but I never used Mueller's name. I just said the U.S. attorney did this and U.S. attorney said this and this and the notes and this and this. And he goes, oh, my God, can you prove this? Can you prove that? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going, he was all excited. He was, man, this is great, Matt. Can you send me that stuff? That's great. That's great. I said, like, yeah, there's only one problem. He goes, what's, what's the problem? And I go, well, the problem is the U.S. attorney was Robert Mueller. And he goes, why would Mueller do that? And I go, <laughs> well, what? Well, because I, I just told you he was like. It was a politically motivated, I think. I don't know exactly. Like, yeah. yeah, but I mean, Matt, he's uh, he's got a stellar reputation. Why would he do that? I mean, hmm. it doesn't even make sense. Suddenly, everything that I said that he was excited right. about, bloop, turn. Right, right. That's crazy. It's, he didn't ask me for anything to send him anything after that. Hmm. And I knew right then. And he even sent me a uh, an email where he said, look, you might want to send that to Breitbart or Fox News or one of those guys. But I mean, if you really, he was mad if you really expect to be you know, to try and become a journalist at some point. He said, I mean, you need to really think about who you're, you know, basically who you're getting in bed with. Right. Yeah. I was like, it's, not, it's nothing to do with right. fucking with. with because the, all them news stations are politically owned by right. a lot of those people yeah. at the end of the day. With, but I was like, I can't believe that you're going to ignore. Anyway, my point is, is that, look, what I would love to see happen. Free Pete. I would love. <laughs> free Pete, baby. Yeah. I would love to see. I would love to see. People obviously buy the book. Yeah, look at the look at the um, exhibits. Yeah, fact check it. But send it. But but to to share this with share, like yeah, get the share story it with ten people there. and ask yeah. them to share it with ten people and right. ask them to share it with ten people because look, I don't care if it's going to conservatives or um uh or liberals or whoever it is, but if you if you got the message out there and could maybe somehow or another there, there are avenues to cut him loose mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is what i'm saying is right, that right yeah, could help him right first of all he's got a, he still has the ability to and file people a 2255 like yeah he can file a 2255 because he's got a str super strong argument that one he pled guilty to this and Mueller had him in, uh, enter into a, uh, an agreement with saying something completely opposite right. which that basically didn't hold up right so well what ends up happening is he has the ability to get his sentence basically quashed or right. reduced it's a simple motion from, from the government fuck trump could fucking pardon him mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know i mean i'm just saying it'd be great if this got forwarded to, to as trump. many people as possible <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yeah <Trump. laughs> i don't we'll think he watches trump, any please. podcasts <laughs> yeah um but i mean it would be great if it got forwarded to as many people as possible until something happened yeah you know for uh for pete because he's really think of the you know in the back of the book I say, I want to say, I say he's being released in, it's October, I think it's October 2025. Okay. Not 24. Might be 24. I'll have to check. Okay. Might be 24. So, yeah, October 2024. Man. What a, I mean, Jesus. that's, I mean, and he's already done 20 something years. Yeah, goddamn. It's almost, it's, right. That's, that's fucked. You know, his mom comes to see him like every two weeks, just like my mom used to come. We used to see each other all How the time. How old is he? Uh, Pete, pizza, Pete's 50. He's 50 now. Damn. He was exactly my age. Wow. Uh, so, yeah. So, I mean, that's it's definitely, you know. And here's the whole thing. Don't even believe me. Just look at the evidence. Read yeah. the book. Look at the evidence. Mm -hmm. You don't have to believe me. I'm just some scumbag. <laughs> I mean, I have no problem with you saying, oh, I don't fucking believe you. Okay, right. Well, right, great. Don't believe me. Yeah. Read the book. The facts look, are there. It's not even a big book. Yeah. It's an abridgment of a larger book. It's like, it's like 110 pages. Mm. It's a joke. There's footnotes. They all correlate with the exhibits, so that's that's uh, that's where I'm at. And keep in mind, things could go bad for me. I could get violated. Maybe for, for all I know, they may come after me. <laughs> we were talking about getting killed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah. So anyway, definitely. don't come after us, please. Yeah. You know. Don't kill the messenger. You can always. Yeah. You could always. Uh, they could always come up with some some reason. <laughs> right. To, yeah. Some FBI reason to violate. Shows up it's not Danny's hard to violate door. somebody Holy on shit. probation. <laughs> not hard to yeah. say eh, yeah we decided you got to go back for six yeah, months we don't like what you're doing right wow well thank you for coming in here and telling the story Hell yeah. it was a bombshell <laughs> i hope a lot of people can share it and learn more about this and and we need to fucking free pete 
<laughs> He's such a good guy. And yeah, all. Yeah. <laughs> he only moved the body. Yeah, yeah. He only moved the body. It's, it's, a great, it's an amazing story. And I said, yeah. you know, everyone like they yeah, can go down there. Great. They can get order the book. Soon you're going to have an audio version of it available. We're going to help you record some audio yes. stuff yeah. for, for Matt. Uh, well, he's got a YouTube the- channel. Subscribe to Matt's YouTube channel because he's going to have some, some uh, audio book. You're going to put some audio recordings on there soon. Yeah, I'm going to take some of the actual stuff that's on my website, Inside True Crime. I'm actually going to do an audio version and put those up yeah. so that you can, you know, because nobody reads. Right. right. No, everyone listens. Listen. They want to listen right. to so, the story. So they want to drive and listen. Right. Yeah. Is that a podcast or is that just yeah, an audio, 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 audio book? Audio book. Yeah. Podcast, yeah. yeah. It's not really a book, though. They're just synopses. Right. So audio. Yeah. It's just a story. It's a story. <laughs> yeah. Right. Short stories. Whatever. Yeah. Well, stories subscribe to his YouTube channel, buy the book, Devil Exposed on Amazon. Check out his website, Inside True Crime. And uh, what's the exhibits website? Oh, uh, DevilExposedExhibits.com. Dot com. And there'll be a link. Fact check them yourself. Cool. Yep, that's yep. right. All right, man. Thanks again, Matt. Hopefully uh, we can tell another story again here in the future. Yeah. Sorry I had to rush oh. through this. That's completely Danny's fault. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Good night, everyone. Thank All you. Right.